afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a sunset safari. I'm not sure if we're going to have a sunset at all. It's pouring with rain. My name is Taylor, and on camera with me today is Craig. Woohoo! And here we are sitting in the middle of winter where we're not supposed to get a drop of rain but it's been raining the entire day, especially if you're watching the dad cam, you would have seen. Now remember, hashtag Safari Live with any of your questions on Twitter. And hopefully we're going to find all sorts of things. Now, huh, we've had to put the roofs on. So for, for those of you who are recent viewers, winter viewers, should I say, and have never experienced the rainy days on Safari Live, we have a roof. On top of our heads you might be able to see it which brings all sorts of challenges so please bear with us today as uh, we are restricted with our view at the moment we've had to literally lock the entire uh, tent up Craig is in a bat cave today and hopefully gonna keep the equipment nice and dry now we've got some animals out and about not a mammal but at least it's something so we're starting the afternoon off with crested Franklins who don't seem to be bothered one bit by the rain today, though they don't look, well, as fancy as they normally do. They're looking a little bit under the weather with their very damp feathers, so they won't be doing too much flying today. I think they're going to spend most of their time on the ground with their beaks to the floor, looking for little insects, looking for seeds, looking for anything that they can gobble up. Now, I was, if this was summer, we'd all be very excited about a rainy day because normally on the warmer months, when we have rain, it brings out lots and lots of things that we don't normally get to see, like frogs and African land snails and millipedes. However, with the cooler weather, seeing as though it is winter, we might not see those things. I'm hoping, though, I'd love to see an African land snail or perhaps a millipede again. Our mildreds, we haven't been seeing them for quite some time. Now, I don't know if these four are pl plotting their attack against us because they seem to be walking in, in a formation, a hunting formation. I'm just joking, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> They're just walking about minding their own business. I'm actually going to bother them just now because I'm going to need to go past them. But that'll be okay. They'll just usher off the road and into the long grass. Maybe I do them a favor. Maybe I flush some insects out for them today. So, yeah. So, hopefully we'll find some things. It's, um, it's interesting weather this. I don't really know how to explain... Uh, as to what's going on, but it's miserable in this in, entire sort of northeastern corner of South Africa. Hood spreads apparently miserable. Palaboras not looking too great either. I'm not sure if it's raining in the southern sands, but up here in the north it most certainly is. However, it is good for the recent burns that we have had. So that's all right. So that means at least some green grass is going to come through. Well, we're going to keep going. We're going to check Twin Dams. We're going to check Treehouse Dam to see if anybody's seeking shelter under the big trees. While we do that, we're going to send you across to Byron and King Senzor, who have also got their roofs on, and hopefully they stay nice and dry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Byron, and on camera with me is Senzo, of course. And um, we are not nice and dry, unfortunately. We're actually quite cold and wet, to tell you the truth. We've got the roofs on, but you can see the rain is... It's like this light drizzle. It, it's actually its getting a bit heavier now. You can see if you look through the, the back. Let's see if we can just show you. Um, where we are at the moment look at that you see that rain coming in there and um, and it's you know, it's not not uh, not ideal not ideal at all so it's coming in and we're probably gonna have to clean the lenses a few times so please bear with us um, I don't know what my plan is this afternoon actually uh, we drove all over the show this morning and we did have leopard tracks and we had lion tracks but I think both Leopard and lion crossed out of Juma. Uh, definitely the lions. Leopard track we had were, was of a big male. Now I'm not sure if that male um, was Tingana because he was actually found on Piffles Hook, so north of, our, north of us. Um, so there's a chance that, that he did cross out. We'll see, we'll see. It's always difficult driving in this weather. Um, and I say that because sometimes you can bump into something if you're lucky. And you might find some animals moving around. 
and other times you can drive around and animals look for a bit of shelter especially when it's cold cold and wet is not ideal and um, and then it becomes very difficult to find animals in this weather The nice thing though is that with the rain, the, the, the road, um, so the road gets nice and wet and the thing is, is that then if we do see any fresh or see any tracks, um, you can then gauge how fresh they are a lot easier because you would have seen the rain either falling on the tracks or the tracks on top of the rain. Now Zoe, you asked, why does the ground look like it's been burnt? So I'm assuming you were referring to just behind us, that section of land or that, that view that we had, it does, did look like it's been burnt because it has. So Zoe, we had, so that area, um, that's actually a fire break. So what happens is we burn a section of, of, the, of the land um, and basically it acts as a fire break. So if fires do break out, they don't cross that fire break and burn entire sections. So fire breaks are crucial and very, very important. But the thing with fire, fire is an amazing tool for the bush because it returns a lot of nutrients back into the soil. So Zoe, it's very important to have those fires, not just to protect areas, but also to um, rejuvenate areas, to return nutrients back into soil, to get rid of all the dead and decaying plant material. It's very, very important. I don't think the birds are going to be too active in this weather either. You never know. Uh, so some of you might be wondering why there hasn't been uh, the pre-drive, the pre-show drive. So we've uh, done away with that um, for the moment. Uh, the, don't know if it's going to be back again. So there's no pre-show drive. It's just literally straight out on drive. Um, so that's why there's no pre-drive. <laughs> sure. Some hornbills calling in the tree. Sinak, you asked what animals come after the rain. Uh, well, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, the animals are always around, Sinak, so it's not a case of certain animals will arrive after rain. Animals are always around, um, but they probably look for shelter in the rain when it's raining and cold like this. Probably look for shelter. Um, You might get some animals, maybe something like an aardvark or pangolin, possibly after the rains coming out and looking for active termites. Maybe some insects will get a bit active. You might hear a frog species or two, but I don't think this, this rain is heavy enough to get those animals out. Um, and also because it's still winter, it's cold. see this rain pouring in now from the front it's uh, it's really not great not ideal because it's light rain it's actually easier because it's it's kind of coming in so it's not uh, it's not that heavy rain that will flow straight down that's why everything's so wet here at the moment oh dear <laughs> you're right there Senza? Yeah. Alright, all sounds like 
Taylor's woman. She's got a hoodie on. Let's go see if she's got an idea or plan for this afternoon. I don't feel like getting pneumonia. So <laughs> I'm going to keep my hood up today and drive around like this and try and keep myself warm just a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen though. I can imagine in the next 20 minutes I'll be completely drenched, which is so exciting. So I'm definitely I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be the highlight of my day. And you Craig, you nice and cozy in the back there. <laughs> I will cover myself in a black bag today. Anyways, we'll see what we can find. I'm not too hopeful of seeing too much today, I must be honest. Just because it's cold, it's um, it's winter, there shouldn't be rain. I think the, the herbivores are going to be in a state of shock. And thought also thinking, what on earth is up with this weather? Um, so hopefully, oh, you see now, this is the other hard part, is it's so great when there's birds. But to try and get them on camera with the roof is very difficult because that means I need to park a certain distance away from them in order to try and fit them in. I'm not going to get that lizard buzzard unfortunately. There is a lizard buzzard but we won't be able to see it. It's just awkward height. It was sitting up in the Maruda tree. Okay well we'll just drive and hopefully bump into things. Please let us know if there's anything you'd like to chat about today. Hashtag Safari Live. I think we're going to have to have many conversations as there is really not much life out here in this weather. Hmm. Now Sinek, you're wondering if the hornbills will be active and what do they feed on in the season? Well, it's it's a tough one. We might find the odd bird or two that's trying to just keep out of the rain. Obviously those Franklins didn't mind... Uh, no, sorry, my hair cable is pulling my, my hair. Oh, let me fix that. So. They don't, they don't necessarily mind the rain, they don't prefer it. That, that might be the only exciting thing that we see today is grumpy hornbills. That's always a good laugh. Uh, they even look more grumpier than what they normally do when their feathers are wet. It's really quite funny. So that will be, I think, one of our missions. We're going to try and do as much birding as we can. See now, I have a stand book, but I have, like I said, I have to turn the car and by the time I turn the car, it's probably going to run away. So I'm just doing it as slowly as I can. I also can't see if I'm about to reverse into a tree, but we'll just we'll just go with it. Can you see it, Craig? Have I given you enough space? There it is. It's hiding. Well, from us. Now that's a little male steenbok that we've got. Thank goodness. Thank you, steenbok, for please for popping out. He doesn't seem to mind the rain too much, but you can see he's also quite fluffed up and looking around making sure that there's no one trying to stalk him. This is particularly good hunting weather for the cats, but we didn't find any cats this morning, so we're just going to have to bump into them uh, if they have been moving around during the day, which of course is a, is a possibility. We know Tingana is on a kill and buffle hook, so we probably won't see him. I don't know where Tandy and Tamba are. I have no idea where Shadow and her cub are. I didn't see any leopard tracks this morning. Barring I had some male leopard tracks going on in Vubu Road. But uh, I couldn't figure out where they went or what actually happened to them. But the stem book will be on high alert because even though it's just a little drizzle, um, it's a soaking rain though because it's been going on since just after drive ended this morning on the Sunrise Safari. So it's been going for a couple of hours. And it, the rain also muffles sounds. So not only is it there's a slight breeze out at the moment, which is also rustling the leaves and the grass, but this sound of the rain will also help the predators when it comes to hunting. And it might be good for tomorrow morning's drive. I don't think necessarily right now, but typically the rain washes away scent marks. So things like leopards and lions will have to go out on territorial patrols to remark uh, their, their territories once again. Hello, beautiful. Yes, I know you don't like the rain, especially at this time of the year. Normally when it does rain, you've got lots of shrubs that you can hide underneath. See, a lot of the smaller shrubs have lost their leaves, so there isn't really much for them to sort of tuck away underneath, unless they go and stand under a big Balanites tree, or even, what else is there? Jackalberries. Povey the chow chow, you've said look at that little Bambi, close, but Bambi was a, a deer if I'm not mistaken, of course Bambi was a deer. These are antelope, 
So not quite the same. Uh, and if anything, I think Bambi looks closer to a bushbuck. Well, what we have, well, look at our fluffy head is now <laughs> giving us a good shake there. Shame, little Stianbok. I hope you don't get eaten today. You're being very nice by standing so still. You know what I think might be a good idea is maybe we must go and check that genital. Hey, Craig? That is going to be interesting to try and get that on camera, but we will do our level best. Please don't be a tree behind the car. We'll have to do much slow driving today just in case we do accidentally reverse into something. I'm completely closed off. It's open here where I am. And then from just sort of behind me, there's just flaps all the way around, just trying to protect the equipment. But as we drive, this is the big problem, is that the rain is obviously blowing into the car and onto the camera. So you're going to see lots of raindrops on the lens. Um, you're going to just have to bear with us every now and then. The screen might go black. Don't panic. It'll just be Craig. He'll wipe it whenever he feels as though he needs to wipe it. So I'm just checking very carefully. Now it's hard to actually search when you've got a hood on. And it's only me looking for animals now because Craig is pretty much stuck in the back that he can just look straight ahead. Craig, you, you tell me where to go, left or right, in terms of driving, and then I'll, I'll search this side. What I did see is some buffalo tracks <clears throat> coming onto the property. So all going that way, maybe we'll go and check Chele Pan. That could potentially be a good spot in the next few days because if we have enough rain, uh, Chele Pan is all uh, sort of dried up, but it will make mud. And the buffalo love the mud on those warm days. But we'll keep searching and hopefully we'll find some more things. Maybe spend some time with a daker if we can get one on screen. We'll look for our grumpy hornbills. And we're going to check the tree for the genet. And I'm going to send you across now to Byron to see if he's managed to find any life on this miserable day. No, Taylor. <laughs> we haven't, not yet. We're just getting wet, that's all. The, um, anyway, we'll see. We'll see if anything decides to come out in this weather. I haven't even found a hornbill yet. I think Taylor said she found hornbills. I'm trying to look in the trees. The problem is, well, we've got the roofs on, obviously, um, to try keep the, the camera equipment dry. But um, but the problem is then, if there's something in the tree, we can't film it. So we we'll have to park at specific angles. Logan, the lowest winter temperatures can get down. The Sabi Sands, I have been here when it's got down to about um, 2 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees. Um, uh, I think, here we go, look here, I've got a kudu hiding in the bush over here. Can you see it there, Sands? Just hiding through the, in the thicket, there it is. Oh, you see, it's a bit difficult. It just moved off. Um, there's just a kudu hiding through here. Let's see if I can get a view of one. Uh, sorry, they've just moved through the thicket. I just saw two females. There's, I think I've got a glimpse of a male. There he is. Let's see if we can, sorry, Senzo, there's a lot of bushes. Um, but this is a nice example of how we were saying the animals hide in the in the thickets now when it's raining like this. So it can make it difficult to spot them. And there we go, nice kudu bull. Now it's interesting, he's got very prominent clear white tips, but he doesn't look like a full grown male. He should still get a bit bigger. You can see they love these thicker areas. Yeah, they're just disappearing through there. There's the one female we saw. We saw two females. Um, so, Logan, getting back to your question, you know, it's about 2 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees. That's the coldest I think I've had on a, on a winter's morning.
The animals cannot get hypothermia. Uh, we can, but the animals can't. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's not cold enough for hypothermia. Um, the the animals, they they generally they know how to um, how to try and stay warm. I suppose try and stay out of the rain. They'll that's why like these kudu and that'll move through these dense thickets and they'll stay hidden or try to stay hidden under the trees. That should help them stay out of the rain. Um, but no, it doesn't get that cold that they'll get hypothermia. Laurie, I don't know if this rain will, will start greening things up. Uh, maybe, you know what, it might cause a few green shoots to come out in those burnt sections that we were discussing earlier. It's a possibility that that could happen. Uh, and Because that, that, that burnt area is so rich in nutrients at the moment, any little bit of moisture or any little bit of rain could easily prompt a bit of growth. So there might there might be there might be some signs of of growth um, in the next few days. We might just see little shoots coming through, possibly. Della, we will indeed try to check the hyena den, maybe a little bit later. Um, we'll see if there, if there isn't any sign of them. I don't think they'd be out in this weather though. Uh, <clears throat> but we will definitely check and see. I could be wrong. Hope you're all having a good start to the week so far. It's just Monday morning for some of you. Or... <laughs> Rush needs to say, we camouflage perfectly in this weather. We do, I suppose. Brown and brown jackets, greenish hats, green blue hats. And because of this weather, um, with there not being much light around, yeah, we probably blend in very well and disappear. So if we had to be moving through this bush now, I don't think you'd really see us. It would be difficult to see us. Just like it's difficult to see some of the animals at the moment. So I'm not sure where, where we can check this afternoon. I'm just driving around really just to see if there's any luck with anything, anything. I mean, I'm not sure where we could possibly go and check. We'll try to check the hyena den, but um, I don't know if we'll have luck there. Maybe, maybe. Taylor had some luck there this morning though. Ali, I don't know about this time of year if we'd see an African land snail. I don't think so. It's mainly in summer we get to see them. Um, so I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't remember, for the life of me, I can't remember now if we if we see the land snails in winter. Not that I know of. I can't. Uh, I'm not sure, Ali, actually, to be honest. But I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I'm just trying to think. I think, you know, you know with a bit of the moisture. But I, like I said, I don't think this is enough moisture to bring those animals out. Maybe. Can't believe how the weather changed. It was overcast, but it didn't look like it was going to rain. But now this rain has set in, and you can see it's all around us. It uh, looks like it's here to stay. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, Lisa, no, I don't think it's. A, I don't think we can smell the wildlife better because it's so wet out. Um, but we, you get a lovely, lovely smell from the bush. Uh, all the wet vegetation, the wet soil. You get lovely smells um, from that, but not necessarily the wildlife. Unless I suppose if you're really close, you might be able to. It's wonderful. This, this lovely bit of roof is channeling the water beautifully down onto my knee so that's really nice that's wonderful <laughs> Well, let's see how Taylor's doing and if she's warm enough. It's cold. Taylor, please don't get sick. I'm going to try not to. That would be the worst thing in the whole world. Imagine getting sick and then going on holiday. I'll be very upset. Right. We have not seen anything else just yet. I saw a, tur a turtle dove. We did see one on the road. I sang a song about a turtle dove and the elephant dung. There's plenty of elephant dung, but no elephants to be seen just yet, so I'm scanning for them. I don't know what direction the tracks are going in, unfortunately, because they've all been rained upon. Uh, and that's the other issue, is that if there were any big cats walking between game drives, we're really not going to be able to see their footprints very well. So, Byron, let's go looking for some lucky beans, and hopefully we'll just bump into the animals. Hopefully that will be... Uh, hopefully the animals will accommodate us today. We're on Mumba Road at the moment. And I don't, I, haven't, I didn't, dri did I drive here this morning? No, I didn't drive Mumba Road this morning. So, we'll just check it and see. I don't, I'm trying to think. Byron didn't really check this area, I don't think, either. There's quite a few spots that we can have a look at. We'll just drive around, we'll drive all the roads, and I'll tell you which roads we're driving on. How exciting that's going to be. Maybe Byron's got some uh, jokes for you this afternoon. That'll be funny. That should keep you entertained. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I must tell you. So, I think this is quite funny. It made me laugh. Craig says to me, he says, you know, Taylor, if we find that Janet, I think we should call this one Jackson. So I was like, sort of looked at him and I was like, what? Jackson? And then he went, yeah, Janet Jackson. <laughs> And I just thought it was the greatest thing. So we totally need to dub that um, that Janet, if we do find it again, that Janet will be called not Genevieve like a one in camp, but Janet Jackson. A very clever Craig, well done. Very funny this afternoon. Please keep them coming. I think we'll need all, all the hilariousness we can get. Maybe you can all send us some jokes. Keep them PG though, please, as children that watch this show. So I just have to remind you all that this is indeed a family show. So maybe there's some great corny animal jokes that you can think up of. Please feel free to show it. Now Craig's, he's waving his cloth at me. He's going to wipe the lens. I don't know why I keep looking back at the camera when Craig is wiping the lens because you can't see me anyway. Just see bits and pieces of me. We're gonna have to. We might have to do some singing today, perhaps. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think of ways. Should we go, Craig? We could probably do a really long segment on trying to start a fire with uh, wet grass and wet wood. That might take an hour. That would be quite exciting, don't you think? <laughs> I'd probably get so annoyed that I'd end up just pouring petrol over everything and then lighting it. Don't do that. We don't want to start a fire out here. However, I do think that maybe our chances of the, the buffalo returning will increase now. Because if this, this sort of rain cloud is localized to the nor northern Sabi sands, that means there's an Inyala up ahead. Don't run, Inyala, don't go, we need you, we need to talk about you. They've now disappeared into the thicket, which I don't blame them for. But maybe the, the rain will bring all that green, green grass that's in the burnt areas that will start pushing through. Uh, maybe that will entice the buffalo to come around and all the other animals too. So who knows? This might work in our favor. Maybe one gloom and, uh, well, sort of not gloom, one gloomy, miserable day will reward us with a whole lot of fun. Now, you can't even see that there's, an, there's two Inyana standing in that quarry thicket, can you? You can just sort of see a little brown speck just sort of... Uh, um, on the right hand side of your screen you can see it lifting his head up every now and then he's munching away and that's actually a good spot 
and sheltered underneath some of those quarries and is able to also get something to eat. The Crested Franklin seem to be enjoying this weather, so maybe we'll just do Crested Franklin sightings today. Craig, should we have a competition? I'm going to have a competition with Byron today. Byron, I'm issuing you a challenge, so listen up. Let's see how many Crested Franklin sightings we can get in three hours. We're about to have our second one now. <laughs> I think that's going to be so exciting. I can't wait. There we go. There's a Crested Franklin. There's also a technique to this. You can... Um, you can use the bumps in the road to your advantage as well to make the, to sort of increasing the height of the roof. Hello, you're very wet. Where's your friends? I think this is the one that was just making all the noise just a moment ago. Now it's gone behind the quarries. Okay, well let's carry on. Let's see how many more we can get. Two to us. I don't think Byron's got one crested Franklin sighting just yet. Where's your friends? Tell all the Crested Franklins today we're looking for them. Another thing we might go and do is go... No, it's not active though. I was going to say we can go and check that Aardvark burrow. Or the Warthog burrow slash Hyena burrow off of Cheetah Cutline. But I was there the other day and unfortunately it, um, it didn't look like much was living in there other than something as small as a rodent. So that might not be too much luck. But we'll keep checking. I think all the warthogs would have gone back inside. So we'll have a look at some burrows today too. But we're going to keep driving. I have no idea where we're headed just yet. We'll keep on keeping on. Just keep swimming as Dory likes to see. And we're going to go across to Byron. He's got his binoculars out. Searching for any life in the Sabi Sand. I am indeed, Taylor. And why would you come up with the challenge on today of all days? Oh, I'll try my best. I did see, I saw two Crested Franklins earlier, but they don't count, I suppose, unless you see them. So we'll see, Taylor. Let's see how many we can find. Starting to wrinkle up. <laughs> uh, I must be honest, everyone, it is difficult driving around in weather like this. Um, Just trying to think now that um, that sighting that Taylor went through went through the um, the the the, um, the tent the other day uh, was it yesterday yesterday the lions lions on the buffalo remember that sighting I was in the sighting when the elephant came and and um, saved the but or chased the lions away and helped the buffalo that was just through there. Um, it was just on the other side of the drainage. It was in there. That's where we had that sighting. So right through the back there, you can see it, um, where that big uh, um, knob thorn is. And you can see those beautiful yellow flowers on it across on the other side. But it was through there. And that's where we had that sighting. I know it was on a, on one of the clips that Taylor was discussing yesterday. I haven't seen that Unkahuma pride for quite some time. Not sure where they are. Uh, sorry, sorry, we just need to clean the lens again. Dames and Trent, you asked how many lion prides there are in this area. Well, we generally um, are meant to see two prides that we get around here. We haven't seen them for quite some time. The Unkuhuma Pride and the Styx Pride down in the south, they come through every now and then. And then we've got a coalition of four male lions which move through the area too. They're the ones that patrol the territory, the whole territory, and make with females from both prides. Um, um, so it's a two prides and um, that's generally the, the only prides we get. It's only prides I've seen here. I haven't seen any other lions in this area. <clears throat> OK, 
could hear a few little wax bulls, blue wax bulls, just darting through the dense foliage there. Always so difficult to try and get them on camera. They fly so quickly. James, I don't think the late rains or, or, or would they be late rains or would they be early rains, James? Um, I don't think they, I don't think they mess with the animals at all. I th the bush, it, it happens like this every now and then you get a little bit of drizzle or rain in the winter. I mean, it's good. It just, just kind of freshens everything up a little bit, helps settle some of the dust. So it's wonderful to have it. But it is obviously really cold, so that's why I think the animals generally, when, if it rains in winter, they don't move around as much. You know, it, it all depends. I mean, some people have had some really great, interesting sightings in the rain. I've had cheetah hunting in the rain and a lion come and chase a cheetah off. But, but that was um, that was mainly in the um, in the summer. Taylor's just chatting on the radio to some of the other guides. It sounds like one guy has decided to come out. I haven't heard anyone else. <laughs> maybe the maybe the guests aren't interested in being out. We would sometimes um I know if it did rain quite heavily or or if it was um drizzling and it was cold or really cold, then uh, we would occasionally just um wait until the rain stopped and then go out on our drive or um, or try go out for a little bit longer on our next drive uh, whenever we did get an opportunity once the rain had stopped because the last thing you want is for the the guests to be to be uncomfortable and that I suppose they, um, you know at the end of the day everybody is out here to see animals but certain certain scenarios or certain times of the day or certain weather can definitely affect the animal movements we know when it's very windy it's also not ideal um, windy conditions cold very very cold is not ideal rain like this cold and rain is definitely not ideal um, sheesh I I haven't even seen a Franklin <laughs> now that Taylor's challenged me. Hang on, there's one, there's one. One crested Franklin. Let's see if we can get it. Two. There's two. There's one just at the base. Again, sorry everyone, these covers are a bit difficult. I don't know, Sensei, can you see it? There's one over there and the other one was just to the left of the tree. You can see they're also trying to look for a bit of shelter. There's another one. There's two. There's three. There's three, Taylor. I win. End of challenge. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks very much for playing. That's wonderful. It was a good challenge. and um, But at the end, there has to be one victor. And that uh, that's myself and Senzo this afternoon. So thank you very much, Taylor, for the challenge. It was fun playing against you. <laughs> <laughs> now Alice is trying to cover up for Taylor and say no I think Taylor meant different sightings no no challenge was how many Chris and Franklin you can see she said two I've seen three we win simple hey Senzo there we go <laughs> no no that's a end, end of end of challenge it was a Challenge accepted. Challenge one. End of challenge. <laughs> See, you don't necessarily have to be good at the challenge. You just have to be wiser than the other person. Stacy, you asked what is the difference between a spur fowl and a Franklin? So let me try to show you. Sorry, let me try to dry my hands here quickly. So, Stacy, the spur fowls have a very prominent spur at the back of the leg. Um, and I'll try to find in my book. 
think they've got some information here on them but uh, it's a very prominent spur on the back of the leg um, that you you can actually see from time to time uh, so that is the main difference is that spur is a little bit more prominent um, and you can see it quite easily let me just have a look here where are Franklin's in there okay crested Franklin so uh, let's see Can I tell you how interesting I find this? The book, the bird book which I have, has not got an image of the common ostrich. And I find that very upsetting. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, Alright, so now having a look. There are a few different, so Franklin, Shelley's Franklin, we do get in this area. We get, um, we get the Koki Franklin. And then you start getting these spur fowls. Natal spur fowl. Now let me show you. Um, so Stacy basically it's just how prominent that spur is at the back of the at the back of the leg if you look at the Natal spur fowl it's very very clear very prominent do you see that little spur at the back there and you can see on the back leg there too those are very prominent the the Franklins the Franklins also have them um, let me just show you quickly the, um, the yeah, that theory's kind of gone out the out the window a little bit. So the idea is that it's more prominent on the spur files, but the Franklins have them too, Stacey. If you look, there's a crested Franklin. There you can see they also have those little spurs. Um, however, the, the spurs aren't as prominent on the females. So, again, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe Taylor can can explain it a bit better but but my understanding is the the, um, the spur files it's the those spurs are very very prominent and on the Franklins they're not as prominent it's basically it simple answer let's head over to Taylor and see what she's up to Well, rumor has it Byron that you've been cheating in the bird game but we'll get into that just now look at this greenery <laughs> I've no idea what this little shrub is that is growing because you can see it's just really sticks but it has got some new leaflets which is quite exciting I hit the brakes so hard that Craig, Craig almost ended in the front seat with me because I thought it was grass it is not grass though but maybe in the next few days we'll be able to see some more life but I thought that that was very exciting but uh, I'm losing my Go back in my pocket and using my mic pack. Right, now Byron, I'm very upset that you tried to cheat in this game because I'd still be in the lead because I had four Franklins plus one. That's five. You only had how many? Three. Oof. Someone's a bit behind, but that's not how we do it. We're doing sightings, family groups. But thank you, Alice, for having my back and explaining it nicely uh, to Byron. We'll talk about the difference between Franklin's and Spur files. Hopefully, we'll be able to either find a Swainson's or an Atoll Spur file, and then we can have a look at the differences. Or if we can find a Koki Franklin. Oh my goodness, more birds. Look at this. How exciting. A forktail drongo. Oh, it's just flown away. Never mind. Right, we'll find another one. There's a dove on the road. Let's quickly race to it. <laughs> Hold on. It's also flown away. Mm, maybe we'll get some other birds. We're on cheetah cut line at the moment. Just doing a little bit of a boundary patrol. And I think I might go towards Bufflesook Dam. There wasn't a sign of life at Bufflesook Dam today. Not even one bird. I did see a couple of terrapin heads bobbing up and down in the water, but that was really about it. I was hoping that we were going to find a leopard sitting on the banks, but we didn't. Otherwise, you would have seen it on the sunrise safari. Maybe there were, something would have changed. And it's just a pity that Tingana is so far into Bivalzuk, because if he was near the boundary, he might have used Bivalzuk Dam to drink from. But as I understand it, it's actually quite far in, and I think there's another dam nearby. So there's no need for him to come this way. I was going to drive on the fire break, but I think let's go towards the cut line rather. Where are the Franklins now? They heard we're having a competition and they're also going to hide away. 
They do that. They no, they can't do that. That's mean. I mean, we see Franklins all the time. Right. Let's check down here. Maybe there's a lion walking towards us. No, not that side. Oh my goodness, it's a car. We have to go off the road for the car. Let, let them quickly just squeeze past us and then we will carry on and then I will be able to continue our Franklin mission. No, I just hope I'm going to listen to make sure that he's far enough away from us that I can actually reverse. I don't think he'd like it if I reverse straight into his car, would he? Probably not. Well, he didn't shout that he saw a leopard or a lion as he went past, so I'm not sure if there's anything down this way. But we're going to keep going to Bivol's look damn. Oh no! Alice just fed me the worst news ever. It seems as though Byron's found another flock of Franklins. I have indeed, Taylor, but I mean it's too late. We won anyway, so, but there are, um, I think, are those not the Natal Spur fowl that are in there? I'm just trying to see carefully. Hiding in the thicket. I think there are indeed those on a tell spur foul. So they don't really count, I suppose, because we were told they had to be crested. Franklin. Well spotted though, Senzo. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, well, let's carry on and see if we can find more Franklins. <laughs> Jesse, no, there are absolutely no animals that like the cold or the rain. No, no I was just joking. Jesse, you know what, hang on, there we go, we found something, everyone. We kind of found something that's run off. <laughs> There's a water buck ahead of us. Just kept, you see, also moving into the thicket. Um, Jesse, I, I, I don't think they're animals that necessarily like the cold or the rain. Um, but but they don't mind it very much. This is, they don't. I suppose they don't. They don't mind it, but but it's not a case of them enjoying it. No, not at all. And the animals adapt to whatever weather there is, I suppose, but they are clever. You can see they tend to hide in amongst the thickets um, to try and stay out of the rain, try to stay out of the cold wind. But the animals all have thick coats, so they're generally well protected from these conditions. Sinak, you asked what the difference between male and female Franklins is. Well, Sinak, it, it depends. Some species, the males might be, a, um, they might have different, slightly different coloration. Um, but I, I don't really understand what you mean. Do you mean like in terms of the coloration? Uh, like we were saying, like I was showing in that other photo, the one, um, yeah, it's. Uh, the Franklins actually look quite similar, see, like they don't, you can't necessarily identify male and female from uh, from coloration with, with most of them. Some of them, the Cokie Franklins, you can, it's all coloration that's different. 
Um, Shelley's Franklin you can too. Um, so, uh, but it depends on the species. Cenac, so there are a lot of different species of Franklin and Spurfowl. You can smell this burnt um, section of land very, very clearly now. It's all, actually, um, that smell of, I don't know if you know when you, when you make a fire, if you want to put the fire out, you pour a bit of water on it, that, that water on that burnt, um, burnt piece of wood or ash, that's what we can smell now. Eric, there are a number of different medicinal plants in the bush. Um, some are more folklore than anything else. Um, locals uh, years ago would believe that certain plants had more medicinal uses than they actually do. Some do work though, some do work, and there are a number of them. Um, most of them, most of the medicinal uses are for stomach ailments, uh, to prevent uh, diarrhea or, or nausea and you'd usually boil roots or and and just about every tree has uh, well most of them most of them not everyone but most of them do have that uh, that i suppose medicinal use to, to help stomach ailments the um the knob thorn tree would was said to help with the toothache if you cut some of the knobs off and ground them down or bit on the knob of the from the knob thorn tree they get these little knobs on the bark but uh, but yeah, I don't know if how how effective they really are right well uh, let's go back to Taylor in the rain now we've now seen 23 Franklins um, so let's find out how Taylor feels about that <laughs> hogwash i don't believe that that's true for one second we haven't actually seen any more franklins but what we have seen down there is a family of waterbuck i'm trying to duck out of the way i don't know which way to go craig i'm sorry there we go but there are a family of waterbuck for you to have a look at you can see they've moved down into the drainage line which is actually a very good spot to spend the day on a wet afternoon like it is today hiding in there. There's lots of tamburti trees and they've still got some of their leaves on them at the moment and so that will keep them nice and dry and then also out of the wind. Now the problem is not necessarily about getting wet but it's the cold chill that comes off of the wind that will send shivers down their spines like it's doing to us right now. So they won't want that. We don't want it either but the waterbuck are intelligent, more intelligent than us as they're actually trying to seek cover and we are out driving in the rain. Luckily we've got big jerseys and things on. Munching away on the leftover grass. There's not much down there. It doesn't actually look like it's favorable grazing at all. I think that sort of feeding on leaves would be a better option but waterbuck don't feed on these. They are grazers. I wouldn't be surprised in times of desperation when there isn't any grass that they, you might find them taking leaves. We see zebras taking leaves. Buffalo, of course, actually a small percentage of their diet consists of browsing. But it's not like that for the waterbuck. They, unfortunately, their stomachs aren't designed to uh, digest things like leaves. But if it means sustenance, they might do it. But then you'd start to see all sorts of problems you'd see. Uh, unfortunately, them uh, getting diarrhea is often a, a common sign of not eating the correct diet out here. We actually see it with the buffalo quite a bit. But they're munching on, I don't know what grass they're actually feeding on. I wonder if it's just, no, I don't know from here. I can hear a battalier calling too. Sounds like a chicken. When they fly, which is unusual, I wouldn't imagine to see a battalier flying around this weather. Perhaps it's just moving to a new perch. That's probably the case. But they're very relaxed, as you can see. Doesn't seem as though there's any predators around here. 
Oh, wonderful. Vicky, you say thank you very much that you love these guys. Well, I'm glad that we managed to find something out here that you're enjoying. So that's good. That's fantastic. Now, well, I wonder if they're going to come down and have a drink today. It hasn't been particularly hot, and I'm sure they'll be getting quite a bit of moisture off of the grass that they're feeding on because it has been soaked by the rain. But other than that, I don't think it's necessary for them to have a drink, especially on a day like today. Heads down, not wasting any time, and munching. I think I can even take my hood off. Now, Senac, you're wondering if the waterbuck are good swimmers. They actually are, indeed. Uh, one of their sort of main predatory defences is that they have these sebaceous glands, oil-secreting glands, situated on their stomach that um, gives off a very smelly, um, oily substance that waterproofs their coat, essentially. And they don't seem to do it as much in South Africa, but when you go into places like Zambia, for instance, I just talk about Zambia because I used to work there, we would see them swimming across the rivers regularly. So they're lucky. You can imagine if there's a pride of lions that chasing them, say in the Okavango Delta where uh, in the rainy seasons it is very wet and it all becomes marshy and the animals have to swim from island to island if they want to get anywhere, and they will do the same thing. So if lions are chasing them, in, in Botswana areas, you might find, depending if there's enough water around, the lions will be used to getting their paws wet, and they'll often chase after their prey. And waterbuck are able to dash across a river or a dam, and they'll come out the other side, and all they've got to do is, is shake, uh, shake their bodies, get rid of all that excess water, and carry on, whereas the lion's hair would absorb all that water and their coats become quite heavy and you can imagine it's very difficult then to chase after something where waterbuck don't get that it's it's the, the equivalent of a, a duck ducks um oil secretions that waterproof their feathers the same thing so that's quite amazing so they are good but most antelope are good swimmers we see it with the thompson's gazelle and the topi and things like that which is pretty amazing. Uh, most of the animals can swim out here. Rhinos are the ones that are limited. But before Byron's bird flies away, let's go across and have a look at a scimitable. It's gone, everyone. Sorry. Scimitable flew away. Um, beautiful, beautiful little bird. I'll try to find, uh, I'll show you a picture now. Sorry, there's just a car behind me. So I just want to try and move off the road somewhere. Try to find a little road to turn down. It's difficult to get some of these little birds sitting still. Hold on, I'm just going to go through this dip quickly. Linda, the birds, the birds in this area feed on many different types of, uh, of food. So everything from um, seeds to insects to worms. Those hardy dars are worm specialists, the hardy dars that we get out here. Um, the cuckoos, when they come, they feed on caterpillars many many different uh, different birds feeding on different different food and as I always like to say so I'm just gonna move off the road here so this car can get past me um, um, as I always say um, sorry hold on a second let me try to find <laughs> my hands are wet so I can't open this app um, so that's symmetrical. I'll just show you what it looks like quickly. But, but many many different birds have uh, many different uh, preferences when it comes to to um, to food. Um, and as a <laughs> as that beautiful symmetrical. Now, as I often say, well, we used to tease James, and he would ask us what an animal fed on and we would always add at the end of it we would always say um, nuts fruit and mice <laughs> so the birds also always feed on nuts fruit and mice <laughs> james used to get so upset with us because we would just say well <laughs> the lions would hunt on a variety of prey species from scrub hares all the way up to large 
kudu or in this area for example kudu uh, or buffalo and giraffe and also nuts fruit and mice and uh, they need he'd ask us about a hornbill and we'd say all well, the insects and then often nuts fruit and mice um <laughs> Hippo, hippo mainly grass, but occasionally nuts, fruits, and mice. <laughs> so James, <laughs> James used to get very upset because um, it was we would write it in our tests that we used to have to do. We'd uh, have these tests um, on whether it be birding or a bird exam or a mammal exam or whatever. We had different exams, um, and while we were training, and just to brush up on our scientific knowledge and that. James got very upset with me because I never used to write very much. I would just answer the exact question that he asked, and um, and and then he'd say, "Well, you must you must describe more. What what else?" <laughs> that's that's the answer you asked for, wasn't it? And so he used to get quite upset with me. But um, but then we would we would tease him a lot and do stuff like that, nuts, fruit, and mice. We played a practical joke on one of uh, on our friend. Uh, she was the only female uh, contingent to our training course um, Jess and uh, Jess would type out all her exam answers so um, so we well, not we but my friends uh, were, were quite clever with working uh, working with um, Excel and and so on and they knew how to change certain words if you typed a certain word say for example and or the um, and if you press spacebar it would insert a sentence so they would they changed I think it was the for example and and um, the uh, the sentence they put in was James is an idiot <laughs> so, so the, every time she wrote there and she did a note she handed the entire assignment in and James went through and he, he thought, well, Jess, this isn't very funny. He got quite upset, but it was a great practical joke. Um, so Jess was very upset with us for doing that. Anyway, sounds like Scott is in the Mara at the moment. Hopefully, um, he will stay with us for most of the show. Let's see, he's got some cheetah here. Good afternoon and welcome to the Masai Mara. It's a great pleasure to have you here with these two sisters. They are cheetah, they're a long way away. And the reason why they are a long way away is we've strategically positioned ourselves here in the hope that they may try and hunt down some unsuspecting prey. Now, my name's Scott, for those of you who have never met me. I'm teamed up with Ferg on camera, and we've been out all day in the hope of spending time with Cheetah. We got lucky to start off by finding Malaika and her two boys. They weren't up too much. They'd killed an impala in the morning and were quite full-bellied, and we decided to head off and search some kind of new areas and explore some too much time and when we got back to where they were they were gone so we were very fortunate to pick up a, a, a report from some vehicles passing by that these two sisters were here and we arrived about half an hour ago and let me show you where the prey is just to give you an idea well should we start with the impala ferg so there's an impala over there that would be a very, very tasty snack this evening for the two girls. They're young, they're 16 months old. They only left their mother two months ago. So that's the one option. The other option that they could go for is a Thompson's Gazelle, which is over there. And just to give you a reference of where they are again, it's where all the vehicles are parked a little bit further up on the hill. Now the two sisters do not seem to be full bellied. And we have certainly got some wonderful, wonderful prospects for later on this evening. Ferg and I were driving around panicked after having lost our previous subjects. We're actually spending the whole night out and only intend to head back to camp tomorrow evening. So we plan on doing a kind of 36 hour stint out on the vehicle with Cheetah in the hope that we will be rewarded with some action for all the time we invest with them. Most wonderful. I'm told James is also out and about. I'm not sure if you've been on his vehicle yet. And 
he's going to be spending also quite a lot of time out this evening and coming back quite late after dark so we've got a big push to try and get as much action as possible John I'm very happy to hear that you love cheetahs so do I and I'm thoroughly enjoying being able to spend more time with them I haven't spent much time with cheetah compared to lion and leopard in my career as a guide and I am falling more and more in love with them as the days go by they are fascinating beasts very very beautiful to look at and one thing I love about them is that their hunting techniques allow us to a kind of better opportunity a lot of the time to film and capture what they get up to compared to leopard and lion. Leopard and lion often are very short bursts, often in areas with a little bit more cover, whereas cheetahs hunting grounds make our lives, or at least Ferg's lives, a lot easier on the camera and being able to show you what goes down. Kanak, you would like to know if cheetah will hunt cooperatively to bring down their prey and yes they certainly will there's a coalition of five males that we've seen doing that we've only got a glimpse into the lives of what their hunting is like but to give you an example of how hectic they are they managed to kill an adult wildebeest on Friday midday and it took them half an hour to dispatch it now that kind of sounds like a story about lion hunting buffalo and if it wasn't for all five of them joining forces there's no ways one fully grown male cheetah would have been able to take down a wildebeest of that size and I'm fairly certain that these two sisters will also be doing a lot of cooperative hunting they'll both bear down on prey and kind of one will maybe loop ahead or kind of through default end up being ahead and then the antelope may jinx to the side putting the other cheetah in a favorable position and I'm really looking forward to seeing these girls hunt. I've seen them s snacking on a kill that we just missed them make that was about three or four kilometers north of where we are here in an area called double crossing and they had just brought down an adult male Thompson's gazelle and they were just starting to feed on it that was on Thursday afternoon as we were heading out in search of the five male uh, the coalition of five male cheetahs they've actually moved quite far away into the surrounding community surrounding community conservancies and I had a feeling they were going to do that I think they got stuck south of the Talek River because the there was quite a lot of rain in the Loiter Hills, which feeds the Talek River, which is a tributary into the Mara River. And I think that prevented them from heading into kind of their more usual territory. And now that the river's lower, they were able to cross. Oh, beautiful Ferg. So there's some rain along the escarpment, and there tends to be almost, not every afternoon, but most afternoons, there's quite a lot of cloudy rainy weather along that Olololo escarpment. Our camp is somewhere probably just out of the right of frame. Um, probably somewhere in the middle of the shot now is where our camp is nestled on the top of that hill or escarpment. Let's see if we can't actually find it. It will be visible or marked by one or two antennas but Maybe it's actually a little bit further north to the right. Anyway, that's where our home is. Oh, that's looking promising. There's an antenna. But it's quite hazy. So anyway, we've moved a long way to get to these cheetah. And I'm very, very grateful that the long journey has resulted in success and that we've managed to get lucky. John, you would like to know how old these cheetah are, I think, and it's 16 months old. So I'm told that they left 14, uh, left their mother 14 at 14 months, at so two months ago. And you're wondering actually when they will separate, not how old they were, how, how old they are. I'm not too sure, John. Um, I think they could probably stay together for another six months and then possibly split off. But I'm not too clued up as to what cheetah do to be honest so if anybody has any recent uh, or interesting research or documents that tell us about cheetah sisters and how old they may be when they split up from one another because they certainly will split up that you do know John um, so my guess would be about another six months there and thereabouts okay Taylor um, we are gonna send you across to Taylor in South Africa
who's got some little feathered friends and we'll be sure to call you back as and when these cheetah get active. Well, Scott, it's great that you had some cheetah. Thank you so much for saving the day. Now, we'd like to invite you to join us on our challenge of Spurfiles and Franklins. <laughs> Byron and I, uh, well, are participating in today. So, Byron, na 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 na. I'm on my third family of Franklins. <laughs> we've still got the crested Franklins. Of course, we're just trying to make the best of the gloomy weather out here. Now, earlier Byron was discussing, I think very briefly, about Spurfiles versus Franklins. And if we look, have you have a closer look at their legs? We find find them you can see there that they've got little spurs can you see that look at those very sharp spurs at the back very much like a chicken and not quite as long though as a rooster's spurs can get we used to have a rooster his name was chicken a king and he had the nastiest spurs in the whole wide world he was a great guard chicken anybody that he didn't know he used to fly and try and attack them it was quite interesting of course including my dad you can imagine that would have made him so happy <laughs> <laughs> also, um, if we hopefully we will find some Natal spur files, or like I said, some Swainson's uh, spur files, and we'll have a look. But the the spur files have got a double set of spurs, so they've got two on each leg, whereas the Franklins have only got one. And they were separated from the same group a couple of years ago. I think they all used to be Franklins, and then they decided, hang on, wait, there's actually a serious difference here in terms of uh, their development of spurs. So there we go, now we've got two different groups. But you can see they're also very miserable today. I think they're quite happy now um, that the rain has let up. I'm not going to hold my breath because I feel as though it's ready to break at any moment again. Um, but they're drying off, they've got their feathers fluffed up, hoping that the little, little breeze that is out at the moment will rustle through their feathers. And that should dry them fairly quickly. Yes, run, run along now. But they're all hanging around these burnt areas. So I think they're also waiting for the new green shoots to come up. They eat quite a variety of different things, these Franklins. Uh, you know, it, it, I suppose, just like every animal out here, it depends on the season and what's actually around. You can see that one moving off into the burnt areas now. So they will go for... Ooh! Actually, Cenac, you're wondering if these particular birds ate snails. I've never seen them pecking at a snail before, but, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Maybe in the summer months when they're more active, but in winter, they typically be going after sort of seeds, any anything that bulbs and things that they could try and peck at. Um, and then as soon as the rain comes, then their diet changes quite drastically. They'll go for insects. They do try and feed on insects when they can, particularly insects that are living in animal dung or feeding off of the animal dung. Uh, even those little midges that we see, they'll try and catch them too. Um, but they, they eat a bit of everything. And I think that's the important thing out here in the wild in order to survive is to be able to change your diet. And that's why the most successful antelope in Africa is the impala for that exact reason, being able to change up their diet. And Franklins have got a varied diet, as I was saying, as well. So maybe they, I don't think they'd eat snails. There's not many things out here that actually feast upon snails. I don't think they're particularly delicious. Obviously, the animals out here haven't discovered garlic and, um, well, maybe a white wine sauce or something to go with it or a parmesan cheese, which, of course, makes it more and more delicious. And I think that if they had those things, you might find more animals feeding on them. But that's just what you and I like, of course. Oh, apparently I'm making Chantal hungry now. <laughs> Chantal's D2 today. Also, I forgot to say, welcome back, Alice. Alice is back from her short holiday. She spent her time in the Kruger with her family. She's directing the show today. You might also know Alice as Siri, as per James Hendry. <laughs> Alice, aren't you happy that James doesn't call you Siri anymore? Or does he still call you Siri? I can't remember. I haven't heard it pop up for quite some time. Well, let's not say it too loudly in case it, he starts again. You know what James is like. <laughs> oh, there they go. <laughs> well, they're walking off into the distance. See, they're, they're calling now. What are you all yelling about? Well, they, they call for different reasons. They advertise their territories when they're trying to find a mate. <laughs> Now, Eric, you say, don't I think the Franklin sound like someone who's trying to pedal a rusty bike? Yes, that's very creative. I'm...
going to use that from now on. So thank you very much, Eric, for that fantastic idea. Consider it stolen. If, if I remember, I will always credit you. I will try my, my very best to say that Eric gave me this idea. That's good. It's important to try and put things, especially when it comes to bird calls, give them a... Si uh, oh, they got it quite excited, that one. It'll spring in its step now. Um, it's important to be able to give yourself a sort of familiar sound to try and remember bird calls. I do it with frog calls too. Uh, mammal sounds, a bit difficult but definitely with the birds and the frogs, frogs, and even the insects to some extent, the crickets and the uh, cicadas and all those wonderful creatures. They also make interesting sounds. But there they go. Right, let's carry on. I don't know what else we're going to find, but I've removed my hood now. As you can see, I've let the ponytail loose. It does not like the rain. My hair goes like a bird's nest, and especially at this time of the year, seen as though the birds have all started their courtship process and that type of thing. I don't want to give them any ideas on trying to nest in my hair because, you know, that, that wouldn't be great. Although it would be quite nice though, you'd have little baby birds always looking back at the camera. Maybe it's not a bad idea. <laughs> no, we won't be doing that. It's ridiculous. I can't even believe that I said that. Right. That's a great idea, Alice. Let's quickly let's quickly go away from Taylor before she starts talking any more other nonsense. We're gonna keep uh, searching around here. I know Byron said he wanted to check the uh, the hyena den, so let's go across to him and see if he's found anything. Um, well, I've actually just found lion tracks, fresh lion tracks. That's what I have found, everyone. So I'm trying to see where they go now. Give me a second. Um, let me just. Uh, sorry, um, Alice, could we go back to back to Taylor for a second, please? I'm sorry, if you don't mind. If Taylor doesn't mind, just let me jump off here. It's a bit tricky with the canopy on. If I walk around, you probably won't see me. I just want to check quickly where these line tracks go. Let's just um, check with Taylor quickly, because um, there's another vehicle coming now too. Ah, this is a bit tricky. Sorry everyone, this is a bit, it's not ideal. Um, Alright, okay, let's quickly go across to Taylor. Let me try to find out what's going on here with these line tracks. those lions find those lions come on Byron find those lions I'll be so impressed if you can get those cats and um, Alice when you do get a chance to speak to Byron if you don't mind could you ask him whereabouts they are I reckon I could come and give him a hand in the area because there aren't too many people out on safari today and if we help Byron and we find the lions, I'll even call him back into the sighting so can, he can have it because he's found those tracks. So we're on Hyena Road at the moment and I think we're going to check Central. I'm trying to think, Byron was down that way near the Hyena Den and I'd actually said to him, oh you remember this morning, uh, I'd said I'd heard all those zebras that were alarming for pretty much most of the day near uh, a little bit north of the Gallego signs, uh, I'm sorry the Biffles Hook signs, what am I even talking about? on on Bivol's Hook boundary, so closer towards Sydney's dam. And then I'd said there was a bit of vulture activity and I suspected that maybe the lions had made a kill there last night and the vultures moved in swiftly in the morning. I'm not actually sure. But they could have come across and I hope that that is indeed the case. That would be amazing. So we'll start going towards that way as well. We'll jump onto Central. I haven't seen any fresh lion tracks yet. And then we'll go west. We might check maybe a Mvubu Road. Maybe we'll also move towards Sandy Patch, Aubrey's, all these different areas, and try and give Byron a helping hand. Ah, wonderful. Oh my goodness. Well, it seems as though it's starting off to be quite slow here in the sands, but hopefully it's going to improve. Let's go across to Scott, who's found a herd of elephants. Welcome back to the Mara and a very very cute little elephant who seems to be having a little bit of a tantrum and It's one of the most wonderful things you can watch as a Elephant in a well, especially a tiny little elephant like this in a playful move They run around with their trunk flaying from side to side 
Oh, and it looks like it's about to get put in its place by an older cousin, or possibly an older brother or sister. They've stumbled into our cheetah sighting, so very, very fortunate. Oh, off you go. <laughs> Where are you off to? There are some more elephants down there, I think, so maybe it's going to hurry up the rest of the herd. Or maybe there's just something it doesn't like the smell of in those bushes. Nope, it's another elephant. And the behavior that it's showing is also quite interesting because if adults behave in the same way, holding their tail out horizontally, horizontally like that, you should be cautious of them because it means they are not in the happiest of moods. The cheats are just up and beyond the elephants, minding their own business. There's one, and the other one off to the right of that one seems to be grooming itself. So those are good signs that they're thinking about getting up and moving. Their prey has halved, the Impala has run off, but the Thompson's Gazelle is still not too far off. They don't have much cover between themselves and it, so it will be a very, very well executed hunt if they manage to pull it off. But let's wait and see what happens. A little lapwing in the foreground. I'm told you guys are having a Franklin, or at least Taylor and Byron are having some kind of a Franklin off down in Juma. I doubt in this open plain where we are perched now that we are going to see any Franklin, so it would be unwise of me to join in on that action. Beautiful. Ariel, I'm very happy to hear that you are finding that tiny little baby elephant cute. Let's try and find it for you again. I'm not sure where it's actually disappeared off to. Okay, thanks Ferg. So as soon as it comes out from behind the bush, I'm sure Ferg will do a good job in making sure we show you as much of it as possible. I just, my heart skipped a beat there. I looked up at the cheetah and I couldn't see them, which is testament to how good, oh, they're up. Um, the one is up and it's looking very intently at something in the direction of the elephant so I'd be very surprised if that is what is what is exciting it oh they're coming running in down here now what on earth is happening what have they seen straight past the elephants what are they going after we're gonna hold on everyone you got oh it's a warthog are they going after warthog Oh, it's a baby antelope of sorts. I can't see what it is. We can't risk moving. It looks like they could be coming towards us now. They are warthog. Oh, we just can't risk moving now. Let's just hope they chase them back towards us. Oh, what's happened? I've lost sight of them now. The elephants are, have they got it? The elephants are all getting excited. Yeah, they've got it. They've got whatever they were chasing. I saw it in its mouth, a scrub hair. Holy smokes, Kate, well, my gosh, wasn't that incredible? Well done, girls, you got yourself a snack, and just out of nowhere, just like that, look, the elephants are going chasing after them. Woo-wee, can you believe it? So quickly, straight past that herd of elephants, and it just goes to show how opportunistic these predators are out here. As soon as an opportunity presents itself to them, they're up and on it, and we got an incredible display of the cheetah's speed, although, sadly, they were a little bit hidden a lot of the time. But I think we're in a fairly good spot to enjoy that action. And now I'm going to ask Ferg, it's quite smooth. So I just want to sh show you what's going on here now. The elephants are all parading after these cheetah. And thankfully they've only made a small kill. So they're not going to be, well, they're going to be able to gobble it up quickly without the, and carry it off without the elephants giving them too much trouble. Where have they disappeared to? Okay. Okay, they've moved down into the little lugger here. 
So we're going to be able to get you into a good spot shortly. Lots of other vehicles are here to enjoy that, which is good. Because I'm sure a lot of people's holidays have been made just from this little sighting. Is it a scrub or is it a baby antelope of sorts? The color just doesn't seem right. Let's take a closer look now and see what it is. Well, as you can see, they were certainly hungry and they are making short work of what could be a scrub hare. It was a scrub hare, I think. But now that I look at the coloration, it doesn't seem quite right. And I didn't get a good look in all the excitement. Whew. I wish I knew what my heart rate was now, as I'm sure a lot of you do also. Gosh, they surprised us. I thought they were chasing a warthog at one stage. I just saw a blur of movements. Ferg did an excellent job of keeping you guys in the action as much as he possibly could from the position that we were in. Okay, well, goodbye to everyone who is watching on Facebook. It was great to have you guys join in for that little bit of action. And if you want to keep on watching, check out wildsafarilive.com and there are many other platforms that you can continue watching this action on. Okay, so excuse us there, we were just saying goodbye to everyone who we invited in for this action on a Facebook Live, but now we are just back to the regular sunset safari, and I'm sure a lot of you have just witnessed your first cheetah kill, and it'll be one of many, many more to come in the coming weeks. We are planning on spending as many hours as humanly possible with these animals to get you into the right place at the right time for moments like this. Okay, well, now that things have quietened down here, we are gonna send you down to South Africa to join Taylor in the search for some lions. I really hope we get these lions actually if anything, I hope Byron finds the lions. I think he deserved to find them. Uh, I haven't seen any lion tracks just yet. Hang on, I might actually just eat my words now. No, those are not lion tracks. Those are not even any kind of tracks. There's a vehicle track. So we're scanning around here. I don't know if it was a male or female lion track that Byron actually had. He just very quickly uh, mentioned to me that he had some lion tracks going southeast. So I just thought I'd check in Vubu Road, just in case. It's not quite southeast of where a Byron was, but I think it's just worth it anyway because they can change direction if they hear something, especially if they're on the lookout for something to eat. They'll respond to any noises, that being um, a wildebeest grunting or impala sneezing, perhaps a kudu pulling some leaves off of a tree. They'll respond to these different types of things, and that can mean that they could just change direction anytime. I think let's go check this old hyena den. That is off of a Vubu Road. We have seen the lions here on a number of different occasions, but I'm trying to make sure that I focus the most I've ever focused in my entire life so that we don't miss these cats or the cat. I don't know how many tracks there were. We might actually go back and have a look at the tracks for ourselves too. Sometimes it does help to go and actually and look two but that's interesting because there definitely weren't any lion tracks around there this morning when we were at the hyena den now those hyena could have run away if that lion walked past and maybe went and investigated and hopefully and Tima would have gone with them but they're pretty clever hyenas they won't take any chances especially if they've got youngsters around there's so many good spots here for these cats to hide in, in these drainage systems. Remember this area just in front of us going towards Gallego Shortcut. The, um, 
Oh, so I was just listening to Alice there giving the update. Byron thinks it's a, a male lion. He's just quadruple checking now. Uh, so there's lots of drainage systems in and amongst this area, which do make it it's quite difficult. Dude, what is wrong with my English? It does make it quite difficult uh, for us to try and find them. Now, if it's one of the Birminghams, maybe he's going off on territorial patrol, an early one. So we'll just make sure we check all the way around here. Mm, trying to think what the route would be. Okay. Nothing here. Let's try and get out of this mess. Now this is the fun part. Okay, can you perhaps see what's through the gap there? I see there's a big Timbuti. Well, there we go. We'll just stall and then stop. Oh, sorry, little broken tree. I'm going to have to just drive over you just a little bit. Because there are many trees behind me. Cool. There you go. That should be fine. When the tank doesn't turn as sharp as rusty. Okay, where are we going to go now? I think let's go back on Vubu. Let's take the fire break. And we'll have a have a look through these drainage systems, or at least some of them. It's remember it's because it's coming into winter, the, the level of the grass is dropping, the trees are thinning out, so it's making it easier for us to see a little bit further. So that definitely helps when it comes to trying to spot animals. And if those tracks are on top of the rain, it stopped raining about maybe 20 minutes ago or so, the drizzle let up. It was, it was a bit more than a drizzle. So we can't be too far behind, though, saying this, male lions can move exceptionally quickly. Right. What we'll do is we'll keep driving and keep searching and hopefully between Byron and I we'll find these lions or the lion. Maybe there's some more around here. I'm going to send you back across to him. It seems as though he's out his car and I think he wants to show you some footprints. Um, so I can't actually see any more tracks. I've looked around here. This line went off the road somewhere here, right here. But I can't, because now there have been a few vehicles that have driven up and down here. So now I can't see where the tracks have gone. Even the last track I circled, they drove over it. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the other tracks are. Um, it looked like a male. But they, um, you good there, fine, says that? Thanks. No, it's so frustrating. You walk down here. Now, this is the entrance to the hyena den. One of the other guides checked the hyena den. He said that it's not active. He didn't see any hyena there. And this lion track comes past here and it drifts off somewhere. Now, I wonder if it didn't just go off through the block off to my right. But general direction is south. So going further on to Juma, down towards Gallego Access, basically. Um, so maybe we should just head down and have a look. I checked down towards Gallego Pan. No sign of a lion coming out there, but I wonder if it didn't just cut straight through the block. I'm going to drive very slowly and just keep a look out here while we are driving. Just see if we don't see any movement. I think we were very, very close to that lion because you could see the, the soil was... Um, still very soft where it had stood in some deeper softer soil because of the rain so it could have been well it could have been half an hour or so ago half an hour maybe longer I don't know we'll see we'll see let's see if we can find it that would be great there are a lot of thick drainage lines around here Chitty chatty Meg, if I find a very clear track of this line, I will show I'll show you um, the size of it. There are no tracks along here anymore. So it's definitely cut off the road somewhere. That is, that is quite frustrating, isn't it? Uh, 
also I sometimes don't understand how <laughs> I showed the other guy the tracks and then he's he's left already. Don't know why. See the thing is ideally if you get the if you can see tracks or fresh tracks you need to then check track for track where they go very carefully. And it's difficult while we are while we are busy um, driving because I might miss a track cutting off the road and then it's too late. But we'll drive and have a look around. Let's head to James who's got his binox and let's see if he manages to spot anything from where he is. There he is. It's like Everybody, welcome to the Maasai Mara again. Of course, you've been with Scott today. Uh, my name is James Hendry. Yes, and for the very first time in the Maasai Mara, I'm with Viem Duren Prak. That is his extraordinarily long thumb for a man of his height, five feet and eight inches. His thumb is roughly the same size. Good. Now, of course, you may ask us any questions you like. Hashtag Safari Live, and we are looking. actually a bald-faced lie. There are quite a few further north than this, but they are certainly the most furtherly north ones that we've shown you. And as Viam swings to the left, so you will see spotlights coming out of the heavens and onto the gland. Is that not quite stunning? Now, as per yesterday, we're hoping to find some lions in and around the migration so that we might follow them as the sun sets and will basically they get up and do something hunting-like. And we know of two groups of lions quite close by, the Angama Pride, who many of you have met, four lionesses, now 13 cubs, and they do have some wildebeest around them, but they were so very fat when we saw them on the way out that I think that they probably won't hunt tonight. If we don't have come up with a better option, we might go back towards them. And then, just behind us, we have the big male lion, Scarface, and his, uh, well, consort at the moment. And fortunately, they are surrounded by, well, should we say, the same number of people that watched the Super Rugby semi-final at Ellis Park uh, this last weekend. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we'll consider it like a sort of semi-final of the Super Bowl, or the Stanley Cup, or the FA Cup, depending on where you are in the world. So that's what's going on here. They are over there and he is the most famous lion in the world and that's why there are so many people there. They are all, he's under that bush to the right hand side and Marsha you're wondering if there's no limitation on vehicles. Marsha I have read that there is a five vehicle limitation on vehicles. I've yet to meet uh, one guide in this area who's managed to be disciplined enough to uh, maintain that status quo uh, but what they cannot do there you see is drive off road and so although there it looks like there are a lot of cars there you know the line is unaffected he's in exactly the same position they can't get around him they can't surround him so I don't think that there's any harm there at all. We're just going to look here this is probably I, I think we need to Scott was doing this the other day and I'm not sure that uh, any of us have got it quite right I think he's got closest but how do we count a herd like this I've heard um, various guides around the place oh there were 200,000 or oh, there were 24,000 oh, or there were probably 26,000 wildebeest there well, I think it's almost impossible to count them I think once you get above a thousand wildebeest it's probably very difficult to tell the difference between whether you've got a thousand or ten thousand. Anyway, I would have said around here we've probably got in the region of about three or four hundred. So not a massive group. We got some beautiful shots of a migrating herd going north into the northern parts of the triangle over the big lugger that feeds into the Mara River and the one that where, where the Mara Pride are lurking around. So we'll probably go back there later in this evening if we don't find anything here. Uh, we will of course be around for the drive and then after the drive where we'll be doing the Facebook Lives hopefully if we get some action uh, like Scott's just had. Isn't that lucky that he's just had all that? Very nice indeed. Good. We're going to drive around there slowly. 
Karen, you say, do I like driving or being in migration control? Karen, um, I quite like a bit of both. I like a bit of variety in my life. You know variety and the spice of life and all that. Um, Karen, it's very nice to be out, I must say. I, mean, I think the migration control is, is great fun for uh, a few things, but it is inside, and it is, um, it's not even like the tent, you know. It's not like you can nip outside and grab a bush or something and stick it under the microphone, uh, or microscope, <laughs> microphone. It's, it's, very much, it's very much an inside job, but it's great to watch those crossing cameras. That is really spectacular fun. And we've had some great times there, and we will have some more over the course of the migration season, especially as the migration comes into this area. The main crossing points are just in front of me there. And we're not going to go there because the, obviously our cameras are watching those areas. And so there might be some more lions there and I believe that Scott and his cheetah are now having a very small evening snack. So the ladies have just finished off their little evening snack as James says, a scrub hare. It is an absolute morsel for the two of them but certainly better than nothing and they made very short work of it. They may continue to sniff around a little bit just to make sure they haven't left any little bits and pieces or oh, it looks like she found one there as they will certainly not be wasting anything. They are very young and it'll be interesting to actually spend some more time with them and get to know how successful they are at hunting. I have seen them with the Thompson's Gazelle kill on Thursday, and this is the second kill that I've seen them with, and we were fortunately enough to be able to see it all happen. They may get up and continue hunting this evening. Their bellies are certainly not too full to do that. They've just enjoyed quenching their thirst, though, after what was about maybe about 200 meters, 150 meters total chase. They ran quite far from where they were sleeping before they actually started hammering down after the scrub hare. And a lot of zigzagging backwards and forwards until one of them managed to take it down. I lost track during the hunts. I'm not sure, was it one that kind of seemed to lead the charge or did they relay Ferg or too hard to tell? Hard to tell. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Okay, so they were both kind of trying their best to get as close to the scrubber as possible, and one of them eventually did get lucky. It'll be interesting to maybe watch a replay at one point, at, at some point, to see exactly what, what went down. Hello, CNAC. You'd like to know if the prey that they've just consumed, scrub hare, live in burrows, that of aardvarks or termite mounds or any burrows underground and the answer is no. Hares live above the ground and that is actually one of the main distinguishing differences between hares and rabbits. Rabbits live in burrows, have got much smaller ears and they hop whereas hares have got big ears, live above the ground and have got more of a running motion as opposed to a hopping bunny rabbit like motion. So no, the scrub hare is above the ground and there's not actually any rabbits that do occur in this immediate area that I know of. There may be some up in the rocky areas around the escarpments, but I'm not too sure of many rabbits living in these parts. The most widely spread rabbit-like creature that I've experienced in my years of safari is the scrub hare. They are quite widely spread through sub-Saharan Africa whereas rabbits tend to be less common unless you are at a pet shop. So what would have happened, and what's interesting is these scrub bears are usually nocturnal, so I'm not sure if the elephants flushed it from wherever it was hiding. They usually hide out during the day in little thickets. It's, it's kind of abnormal that it would have come out so early in the evening. So I'm guessing something flushed it from its hiding place and the cheetahs pounced at the opportunity. And that, I think, could have actually been the first live cheetah kill that Safari Live has actually shared with you guys. Oh no, Kirsty says not so much. Well, maybe we're second on the podium.
Uh, hello. I don't know if you got me trying to do a woodland kingfisher call. Just in case you're wondering what on earth that sound was coming out of my mouth. I went... Craig and I were having a conversation about... Um, well, I was asking Craig what's his favorite bird call. He said either the pearl spotted owlet or the woodland kingfisher. But sorry about that. The gremlins can be a pain at the best of times. But how fantastic seeing all sorts of animals in the Mara. Very nice. And of course, it's always great to have Scott and James join us out in safari. Now, we're still trying to work out where this lion has gone to. I also, the tracks just disappear off of the road. It's very difficult because Gallagher shortcuts quite... Uh, quite sort of solid ground um, and then when it's wet it doesn't necessarily leave the clearest track almost you almost want a very sandy road when you're trying to track after some rain because uh, the weight of the animal obviously pushes down and the depression of the track is a lot deeper than easier to see so we're just on Zoe's road and I'm just scanning left and right and making sure that I, I can, if I can spot it with my eyes it'd be fantastic um, but no more tracks this side so I'll check towards the Balanites tree and then maybe take Zoe's Road all the way to Fulhamont's Cut Line and I'm going to do a big loop around and come back this way. And we'll just keep checking these areas over and over again until we pick up on some more tracks. Byron's gone a little bit further west, well northwest. He, when I just spoke to him on the radio now he said that he was on Aubrey's Road. And he's just going to check around, around there. It's just so hard to say. I can't remember if they did. I think they did say that they had lions this morning, but I don't know where. And they haven't even found Tangana again this afternoon. He seems to have uh, pulled a sneaky and disappeared completely now. Maybe he's just gone off somewhere to keep out of the rain. I didn't hear if they said they found his carcass that he had because he had an impala. So we're still just waiting for some more updates, and then I'll be able to update all of you. But it's, it's now windy and it's it's quite cold. It's actually more miserable than what it was when it was raining. Craig, are you actually starting to feel the cold now? Pretty chilly, says Batman in the back. And the birds have also now disappeared. I'm, I'm still searching for Franklin's. I was serious about this Franklin competition too. I'm going to win it. It's my goal. I'll be so happy if I can get more Franklin's than, than Byron. How great of a che an achievement is that? Don't you think? I think I deserve an award. Alice, earlier you said you had some jokes for me. Do you still have jokes for me? I need to laugh. Let's listen to some of them. Alice is going to tell me the jokes now. She's just searching. Okay, so the first one is from Abby, who is only eight years old. Abby, I'm, I'm looking forward to this joke, and the joke is, why can't leopards play hide and seek? I don't know. Do you know, Craig? Because they always get spotted. Is that the answer? I don't, yay, one point to me, sorry, Abby. <laughs> That's very good though. I quite enjoyed that one. Thank you for that. I like that. I may also steal that. So Abby and Eric, I'm going to use all the things that you've said today. So thank you very much. I'm just checking this junction here. You know what? I said I was going to go on Zoe's Road. I'm going to stay on Zoe's Road. There's no lion tracks this side though. Any more? Alice? Another one from Ohi Bacon. What do you get when two giraffe collide? Oh, Craig, you better try and think of an answer to this too. Mm, what do you get when two giraffe collide? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be something so obvious and I won't get it. Okay, Alice, I'm stumped. No way. I should have got this one too. A giraffic jam is the answer to that. Ugh. I have a friend who all who always talks about giraffic jams. I, they're going to be so disappointed when I tell them about this situation. They're going to say that I never listened to them. Well, I've got a goldfish memory though, so at least I have an excuse. Oh, please give it to me, Alice. I'm so excited for the, the last joke.
Uh, this is an easy one. Fox hat, your question, not your question, your joke is, which animal always gets disqualified from the races? And the answer to that one could only be a cheetah. It has to be. Is it a cheetah? Yay! Okay, so that was pretty good. I got two out of three, not too bad. Disappointing that I didn't get the giraffe jam one. I really do know better. That's quite funny, actually. Um, but thank you so much for those. I need to start writing them down, but my hands are too cold to write anything down. So you can, if you share them, then I can find them a little bit later. If you tag me in them, and I'll remember them forever and ever and ever. And please keep sending those animal jokes in. We love them, and it's so much fun. And I'm sure Byron would uh, really enjoy them. Maybe he's got a joke or two for you. And speaking of Byron, uh, the jokes during camp, let's go across to him and see if he's picked up on any more lion tracks. There we go. Hang on, we found it. We found the lion. We found the lions, everyone. There we go. We've just found them. <laughs> there we go. I thought so. We turned around, we come back, and um, and yeah, they are. Oh, look at it. It's actually a whole pride. Come on. There we go. That's what we wanted, everyone. Fantastic. Looks like the Unkahuma pride. <laughs> there we go, everyone. How's that for timing? As soon as you got it. Um, Senzo spotted these lions down the road, we saw them. So we just crossing Gallego Access, now all the lions are, we basically between Aubrey's and Gallego Shortcut. So what happened was we drove all the way around, I thought they came through this block. So we, saw, we only saw tracks of the one lion though, um, but it shows you the whole pride has moved through this area. Yeah, some more coming, they're going to be crossing in front of us. So they've just... Uh, I drove through here about I drove through here about ten minutes ago, drove up the road and then um and decided to turn, didn't see any more tracks crossing and came back and luckily our timing was perfect. But you see they've crossed straight through the block. <laughs> Some of you are laughing apparently I promised one lion and found a whole pride now I wonder if the ma one of the males are with the pride that would be really great the track I saw looked like a male track but there was only the one track so this whole pride decided to come through and cross through this area that is amazing sure well look at that finally the well the rain fortunately stopped but this cool weather has helped us Cause these lines to move. Yeah, more of them coming. Isn't that great? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Some playful youngsters. Now I'm just trying to think how I'm going to follow them through here. Uh, I wonder if Taylor is still nearby. She said she was, maybe. Um, but let's just see. There was I I saw another one or so. I wonder if there's not a male following behind somewhere just try have a look through this thicket I don't think so it looks like a whole pride now I'm just trying to think as I said unfortunately we've got the roof on so it makes it even more difficult to follow these lines now through the thicket they're approaching they're basically gonna come out on that uh, telephone pole cut line um, or that, that uh, you see, I'm not going to get through here now. Oh, that is frustrating. Um, you know what? They might be heading down towards Impala Plains. Let's drive around quickly, everyone. I'm going to try to drive around and catch them on the other side, hopefully. Let's see. And um, that cut line isn't far. It's right here. Wait, there's a little gap. It's a little bit open here should be able to get through here isn't that exciting to see the whole pride that's wonderful wonderful uh, see what I mean about it being difficult to maneuver with the roof don't worry we'll get we'll get there Senzo, you're holding on. 
<laughs> Watch out. Fortunately with the roof there are something to hold the branches away. Come on, I don't want to lose them again. It wasn't easy to find them. But that's, as I said, those tracks were very fresh when I saw them. There they are, straight ahead. Okay, we've got them again. Now, everyone, I'm sure, I think this is the Unkuhuma Pride. Um, a lot of you said you're wondering which pride it is. It looks like the Unkuhuma Pride. Uh, all the youngsters and the females. The three lionesses in front of me. Sorry, I was just double checking. The young ma males, yeah. The youngsters are here too, yeah. There we go. Yeah, they go straight ahead in front of us. That's wonderful. Just call this in, shame. I'm sure the other guys are looking for lines. Uh, the stations managed to locate on the on the Nkuma Pride. Um, they are now mobile south. They're crossing that uh, telephone cut line, that phone pole cut line south of of uh, Galago Access. Um, approaching Impala Impala Plains. Okay, all the youngsters. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. There's, there's six youngsters and the three females. Isn't that right, Senza? I always, oh, I see so many different lion prides. I, I often forget. Everyone, just please remind me again. But I'm, sh I'm sure it's the six youngsters with the three lionesses. <laughs> I often forget the numbers in the prides and the. The Kalahari where I was recently, there are two different prides there, and the numbers also, it's like 9 and, and 11, are um, the two different prides there, but... I'm not sure at the moment, they, they're mobile, um, I, you know, it's tough to say, uh, really, but I'm just trying to keep up with them at the moment. There we go, look at that. Isn't that a lovely, lovely view of them? Well, I'm very excited and happy about this. It's so funny. It's amazing how the universe works. I said I hadn't seen them for a while. I'm not sure where they are. We were speaking about the lions and all of a sudden they appear. Now I'm just trying to think that, oh, everyone look here, the two males, the two males. It was, you see, I told you, it was the male tracks that I saw. He had two males behind him, they're following the pride. I'm just going to stop right here, they're going to come out into the open. So it was, the, the track that I saw was definitely of the one coalition member. And yeah, they are, oh, look, yeah, they come. Oh, isn't this fantastic? What a nice surprise, not one, but two of the big coalition that we have in this area. <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow, that, this one closest to us has got a very dark mane. Oh, yes, please stay, yeah? Oh, that's wonderful, and it's nice and cool get a bit of interaction still these lines look at them playing <laughs> sorry about that strap hanging in the way everyone it's a fortunately with the roof
Bobby, you say they're spectacular looking. They are indeed. Now they're still moving. They're still moving. I'm not sure where they are heading to. I'm hopefully hoping they they um, head towards a, an open clearing. It'll make it a bit easier for us to follow them because they're now going. Um, they're heading towards Impala Plains. Hang on, watch. Uh, have a look at this. We've got. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to get the view. Let me try. It. There's li lions in the tree. Look at that. <laughs> oh, this male doesn't seem like he's too, too happy. These are the young ones. Up here, you see the youngsters playing. Very, very playful. Exploring, and look at that. Climbing the tree. Ah, there we go. That's a bit better. Thanks, Enzo. As uh, stations, just an update on the Pride. There's also to uh, two coalition members with them. That's great. Uh, just an update on the Pride. Um, they're still just on this uh, um, telephone pole access or, or cut line, and there are two coalition members with them. Um, I would say if you take Impala Road uh, leading towards um, Impala Clearing. They, um, it looks like their general direction is towards there. <laughs> okay, copy, no problem. Let's see if we can stick with them. Come on. Now, I'm just worried. Black grass photography. You asked if these. Um, so, sorry, give me a second. Black grass photography. I just want to check where these lines are going. Um, moving through some very dense bush at the moment. Sure. see where they go so black grass photography these two males um, are part of a coalition of four brothers that patrol this entire territory so they're the ones they actually um, the fathers of those youngsters and um, and they meet up with the different prides from time to time so they don't necessarily always stay with the prides but they will come in and meet up with them uh, every now and then depending on if the females are potentially showing signs that they're in estrus oh hang on Taylor's got something interesting let's go see what it is I think I have a leopard. I can't... Oh, hello. I'm so sorry. I can't uh, actually hear... Sh e uh, blah, blah, blah. Alice, let me try that again. I almost called you Eve, who is a friend of mine. But we have a leopard in the road. Who have we got? We've got a leopard. This is so much fun. Woo. Well, this is very exciting. Let me just get up here very quickly. Are you a boy or are you a girl? Mr. Mvula? Is this you? Oh, he's seen something. This leopard, whoever it is, has seen something. There are lots and lots of impala around here. But now this is the hard part. There's the leopard. It's stalking. I don't know if there's a daker or a steenbok. I haven't quite seen what it's seen just yet. I can't even tell you right now if it's a female or a male. Ooh. This is very exciting. I saw it on the road from very, 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 very far away. And I said to Craig, Craig, you've got to zoom in. There's something on the road. And he did. And here we are. I th can, can I, Craig, can we zoom into his ears? I think it's Mvula. Yes, it is. It is my friend Mvula. You know what gave it away? Is those faded spots on the back of his neck. And then also those very tattered ears. Nature lover, you said this just keeps getting better and better. It is indeed 
one of the most amazing days you know it started off a little bit gloomy sorry i'm just repacking everything around here because as i raced everything was sliding hello beautiful boy it is very exciting i don't know where he's come from either but now we're on triple m so this is not too good because he could back go back in towards arethusa please don't cross the road and go into arethusa please stay here lovely man how fantastic is it to see this boy he is, he's crossing into Arethusa now. Let me change position for you, Craig, before we lose him. Oh, come back. I don't know what he saw. I don't know if it was, oh, where are you gonna go? I don't know if it was a Daker, they, oh, like I said, there's lots of impala. He's just gonna walk in front of us. Unfortunately, we can't follow him. He's just going to the right now on an animal pathway trying to figure out whereabouts on Arethusa he's heading to but he's definitely hungry he's interested in something and I think as, as I was racing I was holding my water bottle I don't think I put my lid on properly sorry <laughs> I've now my water bottle has now leaked all over the show oh well it's not like it didn't rain I'll see if I can try and get a view of him but it's a tough one. He's just disappeared into the corner and I would like to tell the other guides. Maybe he comes back again. I don't know what he had. Because I can't see any antelope around here. Now I need to try and see if I can find him. But how great is that? First the pride of lions with, um, with Byron and then now a leopard. Hey, how great is that? Mm, we might get another view, let me see. There's a road coming up here. Maybe he's going to cross this road. Just going to try and position us. Ay, ay, ay. I'll pull a Megan and go, ay, ay, ay. That's Megan's favorite thing to do when she is stressed. Not that I'm really stressed, just trying to turn the car. So, I don't know if he was coming in this direction. I don't know where that animal pathway pops out though, but he was clearly onward. So I think he should come out somewhere around there. That's if he doesn't change course again. And like we were discussing earlier, it doesn't matter which way it looks like an animal is going. If it's a predator and it's looking for something to eat and it hears a noise, it's going to follow up on that noise. And that's probably what's happened. He may have been walking through Arethusa and something caught his attention and he quickly ran out onto Triple M to investigate. Maybe it was too far away. Maybe he was spotted as he came out into the open because there's no cover on the road. But unfortunately, he is gone now. How exciting though. You, you think you can see him? Craig, what was that noise? <laughs> Craig, Craig did a, I think Craig's maybe spotted him. It's hard to tell, him. I keep just searching on the road. See, he could be anywhere there and he's so camouflaged. Look at Hosanna, uh, yesterday morning, when he was completely camouflaged. Mm. Don't know what we're gonna do. You know, I don't think we're going to see this leopard again. He's gone very far in towards Arethusa now. And unfortunately, we can't traverse in there. Okay, we'll, we'll drive up and down this road. Maybe he pops back again. I'm going to send you in the meantime, though. Back to Byron with some lions. And hopefully, we'll have some more luck with some leopards. Well, how's that for luck? Well done, Taylor. That's fantastic. I mean, to find a male leopard walking around. Are we still following these lions? Uh, they've moved through a thick area, but fortunately, uh, fortunately, we managed to find them again. I drove around. They, they are heading towards the clearings, but it's still a long way until they get there. Now, I wonder if these lions aren't potentially hunting. Just having a look around. The way they are walking and stalking, and they keep lifting their heads and scanning through the bush. That's a possibility that they might be trying to hunt. But these lionesses would probably be a little upset at the moment. I'll tell you why, because they've got two big males following them. And that's not ideal when they are hunting, because once they make the kill, we know the males will come in and chase, chase everyone off and, they, and feed first. Until they've had their full, and then... The um, the uh, the lionesses and the 
cubs will potentially feed. Sure, it's a cold breeze at the moment. And how's that for timing? Started off as a quiet drive in the rain, but luckily our persistence paid off. Here we go, here come the rest of them now. They're going to be following the, the females. There we go, here come the rest of them. No, John, they don't have mange. They're wet at the moment. That's all. These lines are just a bit wet and cold. And they don't have mange at the moment. <laughs> those males just decided. That's actually great. Let's, uh, let's try to get a, a better view of these males. I keep forgetting <laughs> Senza that I've got to get you through the, the right gap otherwise we're not going to see them are we oh dear sorry everyone this is now becoming very difficult to maneuver around here with the roof on and with the flaps can we get that flap loose maybe Senza try to help you hold it Oh no, you got a cable tie. All right, all right. Let's see. I'll see if I can reposition or follow this pride. Let's head back to um, Scott. He's still got those cheetah who might be hunting. Welcome everyone. We've got some very exciting prospects on our hands. The impala that you can see is in grave danger of being taken down by two female cheetah that are heading straight in its direction. As Ferg zooms out, continue to zoom out, zoom out please Ferg, you'll notice that... Which, which are you on that one? Okay, so it's, it's difficult to see but there's a little ridge that the impala is feeding on and beyond that ridge, there's a, there's a little, well, there's a valley, rather. Sorry, I'm so excited. And the cheetah are somewhere just below that impala. It seems like the impala's on fr flat ground where it is, but it isn't. And we've just looped ahead of these cheetah because they were heading straight towards this impala as well as a few more impala rams as well as some Thompson's gazelle. So there's a whole bunch of prey here and a, and a beautiful beautiful sunset as you can see hello to everyone that's just joined us on facebook we've got a cheetah that's heading straight towards this impala and these thompson's gazelle the impala on the left that ferg's zooming into now is the closest prey to them and i wish i knew what they were doing right now i've been trying to stand on my seat to get a little bit more of a vantage point to get a glimpse into where they might be they could just be taking their time trying to stalk as close as possible before unleashing their furious speed. And like I said, it's not just one, but two female cheetah. They're youngsters, so I'm not convinced how experienced they are. They have managed to just catch a scrub here about 20 minutes ago. And at any moment now, they could explode. It's crazy what an optical illusion it is because that grass beyond the impala is actually on the other side of a valley. <laughs> so the cheetah are below where its little hooves are, somewhere in that valley. They can't be too far from it. And we are in the best possible place if they do end up chasing it. It could well end up running straight towards us. I'm fairly certain. Oh, there they go. Here they come. They're coming at it. Zoom out. They're coming from the right. They're coming from the right. Look at this, straight towards us. Well, that, that first one missed it. There's another cheetah. There's the other cheetahs after it. The other cheetahs after the Impala now. Whew. But it too also missed. So the two of them had an incredibly 
good go at those Impala and I think it's fair to say that that Impala is very very lucky to have got away when it escaped from the first one I was scanning around wondering where the second one was and it just appeared out of nowhere how absolutely awesome was that Whew. incredible stuff and I'm so glad everyone got to join on Facebook as well as the Sunset Safari let's see what they are up to it looks like a beautiful beautiful scene there with the setting sun a cheetah taking a breather Oh. I got so excited, I just said it was coming. I didn't tell Ferg which direction it was coming from initially, but Ferg did a great job on trying to keep the camera poised on the fastest land mammal going about its business. There was one or two shots when that impala was bearing straight down the barrel of the lens, and it'll be wonderful to actually have a, have a look if we can have some slow motion clips of what went down. It all happens so quickly that it's hard to actually piece together the puzzle even after it's happened it was all a blur for me and I'm certainly looking forward to looking at that slowed down a little bit to everyone on Facebook thanks for joining but we are going to say goodbye to you now And back to just the sunset safari fans and viewers good to have all of you with us we are trying out a few new Facebook lives trying to spread these incredible moments and share these incredible moments with as many people as possible so please bear with us as we get used to that and we are not going to keep you in the Maasai Mara too much longer because Byron has managed to find the Birmingham boys. Well, I'm trying to stick with them. Stick, I'm trying to stick with the whole pride. They're moving through a very thick area at the moment. And it's very difficult to maneuver through here. But there we go. You can still see there's one of the big males just in front of us. The other one's behind us. The rest of the pride is straight ahead. Wouldn't it be great if these males called for us just before the end of the show? I'm just trying to see where the other one is. I can't see him. He's behind us somewhere. See, these males are clever. I think they can also s sense that possibly these females are trying to hunt. And they're going to stick with them. Yeah. There we go, here's the other male. Very, very close to us. He's probably going to come into the screen shortly, right here. There we go. <laughs> Do you want to touch a line, Senza? Excuse me a second, everyone. Go ahead, Henry, go ahead. Yeah, a firm, Henry. I think just head south along Impala Road um, and keep coming. Uh, you'll see you'll pass under those telephone poles um, and keep coming south. I'm in the block to the east of that road. I'll try to call you in from there. No, we better try stay with these lions, otherwise the other other um, <clears throat> guests or guides will be quite upset with us if we lose them. If they don't get to see them. Oh, well, we've got the Nkuhuma Pride and the two Birmingham males, and my friend James in the Mara has got another lioness. Let's go have a look.
Now, everybody, we have got a lioness, which I will now show you. She stopped. She was with that big famous male lion, Scarface, who is yet to pick his head up off the ground. So I'm afraid we're going to watch her for a little while. We can't go off-road in this area, but we're told by our very fine game scout behind us that there is a road not too far from here that she's heading towards. Now, that is encouraging because she's going towards a fairly large grouping of wildebeest, and you can see if I was a lion, this is exactly the grass I'd want to be walking through. Look how beautifully camouflaged she is. So we're going to try and watch her and see if she doesn't go towards them and if not we'll come back towards Scarface and see what he's going to get up to. Uh, you know he's a bit old these days so I don't think he's going to get up to a huge amount this evening other than perhaps pilfering himself a meal from her as and when she decides to kill something. She looks pretty hungry to me. Her belly is empty. Let's try and go around a bit. Oh dear, lost a gear. There is also quite a frightening amount of water in the air, which makes me very scared to the core of my being. And all of you are very pleased with the amount of cat we've found today. What was the exact comment? Catterday. It's not Saturday, is it? Oh, right. There are thousands of wildebeest in here. Yes. Kirsten says it's, not, it's Monday, which is Meow Day. Now, where is this track? Yeah. This looks like a track. No, that's not a track. I'm just trying to keep an eye on her because she's disappearing now. Um, oh, sorry. Let me just get out of the way. There's a, a minibus in a rush. Let's have another look at her there. Sorry about the pole. Sorry, everyone. I can't really move right now. There she goes. You see how perfectly designed they are for this kind of landscape? We've had a lot of questions about whether or not it's not more difficult to hunt here. Well, Chitty Chatty Meg, you say she hunts alone. Well, she's doing that now, but they don't always hunt alone here. And in fact, it's quite interesting. They, they have shown, that, and they've done studies in this particular area, that lionesses living on their own eat as much. Ooh, she's calling. Listen to her calling. Oh, wow. So she's calling her pride mates. And we did have reports of another two in this area. And I suspect quite strongly that they are of the paradise pride. And Scarface is up. Okay, let's go back a bit. She's obviously not on a serious hunting mission now. She's calling. Liam spotted Scarface the Leon. He's lifted his old head, his wizened old face from the wilderness. Of course, in order to turn around here, you need to have the strength of Hercules and the patience of Job. See how I like to mix my pantheons there. You like that, Liam? I don't suppose Job can be considered part of a pantheon. All right, here is the most famous lion in the world. If none of you, if you haven't met him before, you're in for a treat. He's got a seriously, seriously, um, what should I say? Iconic face, I guess. But on account of the fact that most of his left eye is missing, his right eye, sorry. Yeah, he is. Look, he's lifted his head up. Hello, old fella. Hello. <laughs> there he is, along with the lights. Beautiful. Isn't he wonderful? And I say he's the most famous lion because, of course, people come here to see him on account of the fact 
that he has just such, you know, he's been in this area for ages, obviously, but he's so easily recognizable. So everyone knows of Scarface. Stacey, you say, does it get my heart racing when a big male is in such close proximity? I, I was telling the story last night, actually, and it it used to, you know, when, I mean, it, it makes me feel filled with a, a great sense of awe, certainly, but it doesn't make my heart race with, uh, with fear or anything like that. But it certainly used to, and the very first lion sighting I ever had from a vehicle was when I was training, well, you know, close lion sighting like this. I mean, he's sitting, what, about 30 feet from us, but more than that, 50 feet, maybe. And the first time I saw a lion, he was an inexperienced lion, he didn't know vehicles very much, and he dropped his head down. And that kind of classic, I'm a bit threatened, I might charge you kind of a um, posture. And I will never forget how my heart raced then. And I couldn't understand how the people around me were sitting completely calmly. He's an impressive fellow, isn't he? And of course, Stacy, the other thing is that when he's lying down flat on his side, he looks like a, you know, sort of a large Labrador, if you like. But when they lift their heads, then their magnificence is really on display. That black mane is obviously blowing in the wind. It's long. And interestingly also, we saw him the other day during one of our rehearsals. And he was lying on his other side. He was lying on his left. And his right hip is not in a great way. And I remember it wasn't in a great way last year when we met him. He was limping on it. But the left hip looks to be in pretty good nick, actually. So that's good. Now, I wonder if he will get up and do something. And uh, Well, yes, all of you say that... His mane is stunning and he's having a good hair day. I'm not sure that these lions ever have a bad hair day, to be honest. I think they have wonderful hair days all the time. Vim, smile, you're on camera. Again, yes. I said to some people the other today, they stopped next to us, we were with the Angama Pride, and I said, I said, why are you taking pictures of us? And they were such hilariously friendly people, but said in their accent, they were from China, obviously, and they said, because you are so handsome, all three of you. And we all fell about laughing, they fell about laughing, and the lions disappeared into the lugger. When we're not nearly as handsome as Scarface, the male lion. We'll try and move a little bit from here. We'll go a little bit forward and get a nice view. You too. And we'll just see if we can't get another view. Oh, look at him. Oh, dear. Now, take a good look at this male lion. People tend to think that lions of the Mara are the biggest in the world and the crocodiles are the biggest in the world. But I tell you what, I think if you were to put him next to one of those Birmingham boys, they would be a near thing. Let's go and have a look. Now we have still got the pride. Fortunately, they're just lying out in the open for us, but they're going to be crossing our boundary soon. They're heading in a westerly direction. So they're going on to Simbambili, Arethusa, yeah, about that that area, that direction. So it's amazing how quickly they've walked straight through our property. And they're crossing on down towards Arethusa, it looks like. And we'll wait here because the pride's still lying out in the road. Wonderful, wonderful to see the Unkuma pride again haven't seen them for quite some time the males were not far behind i think they're going to be coming through shortly
team. Isn't this wonderful? So, so fortunate. So happy we got to see them. Where are these males? They, they weren't far behind them. And they were coming through this area. They should be crossing through shortly. It's so funny to see how the males follow the pride. Take care. Um, lion prides. Um, you know, you ask, do they have a home? So I, I would assume you're asking, do they have a place that they constantly go to? So, so, sorry, just having a look there quickly. Those bellies look quite full. These lions have fed recently. I don't think they're that hungry. They're possibly just moving into another area for some reason. Um, take care. But lions do not have a, a home as such. They've got, they've got a territory. So they move through a really, really large area, and. Oh, those lines have just crossed the boundary now. Um, so let's just wait. Those males should come out shortly. So as I was saying, take it. They don't... Are they coming through there? We'll just wait a little bit. They're, so they've got a big territory. They don't specifically go back to one spot and stay there. They'll move around and cover their whole territory. Now that is, that's what lions do, they, they mark their territory, they'll defend it against other lions, so it's not to say that they've got a specific place that they go to, here we go, the males are coming now, here they, here they are, that's the one male, might see another vehicle there, they just, uh, also out on safari, they fortunately got to see them too, there they go, there's the, the one male, the other one shouldn't be too far behind. We'll keep a look out and see one last view of him before before they they disappear. There we go. I think the other one should be coming out soon. Let's just have a look. I'll wait for it. <laughs> now patience while we wait for this male lion to come out hopefully he'll be coming through shortly I'm sure he will I doubt he'll be too far behind let's have a look where is he ah uh, yeah I can see him coming yeah I can see him coming he's good you'll you'll see him approaching shortly here he comes there he goes <clears throat> lovely isn't that great? <laughs> well, perfect timing. Got to see the whole pride follow them for some, quite some time and off they go across our boundary. But luckily, we did get to spend a lot of time with them. Isn't that wonderful? Hey, what a nice surprise. Well, there we go. And that's uh, our sighting of the pride again. So nice to see them. Always nice to see them. And uh, just shows you, you never know what you're going to find and those tracks just that one male that the track that we saw and that uh, put us in the at least the right area to try and find the pride and can you believe it we found the whole pride so that was wonderful hope you enjoyed that as much as i did that was really a great surprise we'll see i wonder where we should go now i've got a little bit of time left see maybe i don't know if we'll find an owl I wonder how Taylor's doing on her side. I'm just uh, sorry, just quite a few vehicles around here. I'm just trying to see if we can maybe move around them. Oh, sorry, my wires popped out. Sorry, Alice, have you been trying to get hold of me? All right, all right. Well, Taylor's out. Let's head back to her, and she's got the spotlight. Let's see what she can find. Well, I don't know what we're going to really find after today. How exciting was that? I mean, we obviously started off a bit low in spirits because it was miserable and it was raining and it didn't show any signs of letting up. But, well, that's exactly what the rain did. It let up and out came the cats. So that was quite nice. A very short sighting of Mvula, of course. We're going to actually head back that side, though. I think he's going to be doing a bit of weaving around tonight. I think he's hungry. He didn't look particularly fat. He actually looked uh, quite slender. Now, we know that Mvula 
unfortunately doesn't seem to catch lots of things all the time. He's very patient and, and that's actually just typical of all the big cats is that it takes him a, a little bit of time. Of course then it takes him a couple of goes. That was bizarre. Was that just me that that happened to? Alice, did you guys get... Uh, sorry, my monitor turned on and off and then I thought we went completely black screen. But obviously not because Alice has not said anything. Okay, fantastic. So I was just double checking that we were... <laughs> we, I'm having gremlins attack me in front. Now, m the lights aren't really working on Wendy at all in front. So you can see it's very dark so I'm just going to have to use my spotlight tonight. But maybe Mvula comes back across again. That was really such a nice sighting. So I have to tell you a story. This morning Craig and I got so excited we just about high five because we thought we'd seen a leopard in the distance when we were on Biffle's Hook boundary. It was not. We did the same thing as what we did today. I said, Craig, what's that? And he quickly zoomed in down, very far down the other end of the road. It was a Dacre. But the Dacre, uh, in my opinion, must be the most leopard like antelope that there is out there. They're just their whole posture uh, reminds me of a, of, of say like a young leopard. It was quite funny because we were both convinced that we had one, but it wasn't. Very excited though when Mvula turned out to be a leopard and not a Dacre. I would have been very disappointed if that was the case. It's actually quite daunting driving without no headlights. My eyes are now starting to play serious tricks on me. Uh, in terms of nocturnal creatures and weather like this, uh, seeing bush babies probably quite slim. I reckon that they will stay huddled up in their, in their little uh, tree cavity or wherever they may be resting and trying to stay nice and warm. I don't know about genets. I don't know how they f actually feel about the cold. You could still potentially see honey badger, aardvark, porcupine, but of course they are all difficult ones to spot. Mm. Let's go all the way to Power Lands Road. We'll quickly go down there and we'll go towards the gate. I actually can't remember if I've now told you this or not. It wasn't Arethusa, it was Sim Arethusa, it was Simambili. I did say that, hey. I've now had like a serious lapse of memory because I was talking on the radio and I can't remember if I was talking to you, if I was talking to the other guides in the West trying to help them relocate on that leopard. It's going down this way. Oh well, if I told you twice, maybe someone had stepped away to refill their cup of tea or perhaps use the luxury facilities and they didn't hear that. So, and he likes it in the West too. It's uh, not uncommon. So tomorrow morning we're definitely going to come and investigate around here and check between the gate, check Triple M to see if he does maybe cross back. He doesn't normally stay there for too long unless he makes a kill. Uh, then he will be there for a few days. Tingana has completely disappeared. Carcass is gone. He hasn't been found at all. So I don't know where he's gone. Maybe he finished it. I also didn't hear how much of that Impala he had also eaten from this morning and there weren't lots of guides out I don't know if the weather maybe frightened a few of them and they decided to stay tucked inside maybe their guests were rather wanting to have a drink around the fire and share campfire stories that's also quite fun to do of course but we'll keep searching don't think we'll be seeing any chameleons whatsoever on a night like tonight I would even be surprised if we spotted one though it's been a couple of days now since we last saw our nocturnal reptile. Ah, it seems as though I'm, um, well, with my comment now, I'm dampening some spirits. Chitty Chatty Meg, you were hoping to see a chameleon. Well, I'll still give it a bash though. I'm not gonna say, no, if you find a chameleon, I'll happily admit that I'm wrong. Maybe they wear their knitted coats, perhaps their, their nana or their grandmother. It's, uh, well, treated them to a winter woolly. Now there's just vehicles going fium, fium. It's like a sort of racetrack here. Um, all the cars are heading towards those lions. I don't know if they got my message about the about the leopard. I tried so badly and I just called it in about 500 times hoping that uh, one of them would have heard me and then been able to of course follow up on that leopard. But we'll keep going down this way anyway. We'll give it another another bash and see what we can find. Don't think we'll be seeing any night jaw night what is wrong with me? Night jaws. Night jars. On a night like tonight. 
uh, unfortunately it's not a clear sky and we know that the night jars like the sort of clear sky so that they can hawk properly so they can see the silhouettes of the insects that are flying above them I, I'm so sorry Alice can you repeat what you said I lost comms with you uh, sort of as you started uh, feeding me the question or comment Ah, well, I'm going to try and decipher it, so I apologize if this is not exactly what you said, but I think it's from James Richard, and you've said you, maybe Mvula will come back and find us a porcupine. Wouldn't that be fantastic? We obviously took down that porcupine uh, a couple of days ago, which was quite nice. We got to have a quick look at that. This road is absolutely horrendous, and I suppose I need to check behind me. Okay, there's no vehicle, so I almost have to fall out of the car to see anything behind me. I don't know if we'll get lucky with seeing something like that uh, sort of uh, so close together. I think that was an exceptional sighting. Did you see a leopard feeding on a porcupine? We didn't have a great view when we went in the morning and just after drive had finished. We were obviously trying to get there. But I think you guys had a nice sighting of it with Byron, which was very cool. But we'll keep searching here. I just thought that was so amazing. I couldn't believe our luck, how our luck just turned like that. Nature, it's literally about being at the right place at the right time. Coming on safari, and obviously, whoever it is out here, this is where we had Mvula, by the way, it was here. Um, obviously, heard me complaining about getting wet. <laughs> sort of thought, okay, well, if you've, you've been out for a few hours now and you stopped complaining, uh, maybe we'll throw you a bone. And well, I got a bone thrown at me, and I'm so glad that it was in the form of Mvula. He is such a lovely leopard. He really is a cool cat. And we've seen so many cats. So you had all, the entire Nkuhuma Pride with two Birmingham boys, Mvula, and then Cheetah with Scott. Great. Oh my goodness. I feel like this whole car is going to fall apart, eh, Craig? Yeah, oh, it's, rat it's rattling a whole lot more than it should, but it, it, this road is just really terrible with all the corrugations. And unfortunately, dragging tires on a road like this does not sort out the corrugations. You've got to get the grading machine and actually take it down an inch or two and, and get rid of it like that and then bring the sand back over again. Now the cars have all disappeared, so they've obviously turned off into Simambeli. I don't know whereabouts the lions or the leopards have gone. But we'll go all the way up and along Vuyatela Access. Maybe we'll get that civet uh, that has been spotted every now and then. But we're going to go across to Byron. He's also got his spotlight out searching for nocturnal critters. Maybe he'll be able to find you a chameleon or perhaps even a bush baby. Sure, Taylor, chameleon or bush baby, that's a, that's a tall order, I think, for this time of the year. Um, especially with it being so... Especially with it being so cold. What is that? I thought I spotted something, it's nothing. It just looks strange. Oh, it is chilly. Hold on a second. What, uh, just looks like maybe it's a cluster of leaves that just look a bit strange. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a little start of a community spider web, but it just looks very strange and it's got a few leaves and that caught in it. We'll see, maybe. Don't know what else we could bump into now this evening. I, like I said, I doubt we'll find a little chameleon. It's a little bit cold. It's not actually. It's actually not a little bit cold. It's very cold. But <laughs> wishful thinking, and now I keep uh, keep seeing things. What I think and hope are chameleons, but uh, no, it's just a. Green leaves again. I'm gonna check so carefully. Yeah, I don't think we'll have any luck with the chameleon at the moment. It's very chilly this evening. Uh, 
uh, Bree Bree, um, you say other than the cats, which other animals or fantastic creatures enjoy the cooler evenings, these cold nights? Well, you might get, you know what, I, I was saying this earlier, because of the bit of rain that we've had, um, you might bump into honey badgers or, or an aardvark or pangolin around this time, uh, or maybe, maybe, maybe. And the reason for that, it's, it's, it's cold, so it'll probably come out a little bit earlier. The other thing is, because of the moisture, it's softened the soil, maybe got some um, termites or ants a bit active for the, for the uh, aardvark and the pangolin. That would be amazing. Imagine bumping into an aardvark now. That would be really, really great. I, would, I wouldn't bet on it, though, if, if I were you. I mean, well, you never know, but I, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. But we'll see, maybe, oh, we'll just quickly find a honey badger, that'll be, that'll be better. Sure. But it is very, very chilly now. There is a cold, cold chill in the air. <laughs> I think this evening, this evening, I'm going to have a nice glass of red grape juice, I think, with dinner. Try to warm me up a little bit. <laughs> Trying to also look for maybe an owl or, or two. I'm sorry, just turning that down. It's nice to have the Mara with us again this afternoon, Scott and James. And they had some exciting stuff going on. It started off quiet for Taylor and I, but then, uh, then our luck basically came together. I mean, uh, Taylor finding, finding that male leopard. Exquisite bliss, you say it was the most exciting drive today. Well, that's great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It <laughs> it started off very quiet. I, I was nervous there for a second or two. It was cold and rainy and wet. Um, but luckily the rain stopped, which helped. So to think this is where it all started, this is where we spotted the lions the first time. We followed them for quite a distance until they eventually crossed our boundary. Now, as I said, they, they looked quite full. Now, I know that sometimes the females, and I've seen this a few times before, when the males are close to the pride like this, the females get a bit agitated with them because they know that those males often take the lion's share, as it were, of the, of the food if they do make a kill. So the females then often try and move away a lot quicker from the male. So they'll walk and walk and walk and they'll cover a huge distance and hopefully the males decide, okay, that we've walked enough, there's no need to constantly follow these females and they'll stop following them. But, um, but the males can be quite tenacious and constantly follow the females. So it's almost like those females try and lose the males. They were walking quite quickly and they didn't really stop. The males stopped once or twice. You could see they were getting a bit tired, but they thought maybe it's worth sticking with the females. Maybe they get another, another free meal. Although, as I said, when I saw them cross the road again, those bellies looked reasonably full. They didn't, they didn't look hungry at all. All looking in very good condition. All those lions at the moment are looking great. few crickets in that calling at the moment. Um, I, I didn't see that very clearly. You said why did some of the cubs look like they had, was it bitten ears? Um, I, I didn't see that properly. 
what what did it look like? I'm trying to think. Senzo, did you have a good look? Did it, what like frayed ears or or little? Okay, okay. So those well, um, those lions. Sometimes I mean the well the flies also uh, sit on the lions and they chew and, fr and fray the ears a little bit. Um, but it's strange for the young lions to have that at such an early age. But we know that these lions struggled, some of them struggled a little bit with um, uh, with that white muscle disease when they were younger. They, they, did they get a little bit of mange? I can't remember now if they did get catch a little bit. Um, unless it was just, I don't know, see, like, I didn't see properly, so I can't, I, I, you know, it was the sticks pride that had mange, but I don't know. So I wonder, Senak, if it wasn't just wet ears, the, the wet ears, the black tips looking very wet, walking through the grass. I wonder if it wasn't just that. I don't think those, those ears would have been very badly frayed like you see in older leopards. Um, the leopards especially, you can see how their hair starts getting eaten off the ear a little bit. Still searching for any signs of nocturnal animals. Like I said, I don't think the, we are going. I've got a front. I saw eyes, but it's impala. Um, we uh, we're not. I, I don't think there's a good chance of us seeing a chameleon or anything now. This time of year, winter, the reptiles aren't as active. It's very cold. I just know in the past winters we don't really see chameleons. You might, you might bump into one, but oh. all right. Well, let's uh, head back to the leopard finder and find out what Taylor's plan is. Or well, what does Taylor feel like having to drink this evening around? I don't think we'll have a fire, but around camp. You know what would be, be really fantastic, Byron, would be a nice cold glass of water. <laughs> no, I think hot chocolate would be absolutely delicious on a night like tonight. Maybe a fire, although I don't know because the, the clouds are starting to come through again and they're looking even darker and even gloomier than what they were earlier today. So I don't know if this is the end of the rain. Oh, there's Byron. I'm going on the southern road now of quarantine. Byron's taking the sneaky middle road. Um, it's very chilly, so I would like to sit around the fire this evening, but I think we'll just have to wait and see. Wait it out just a little bit. But um, I think tomorrow morning could be quite a nice drive, especially like what I was chatting to earlier. It's typically the rain washes away the sense of animals, so maybe it's going to be a very active evening. The wind has picked up too. A lot of cloud cover. It's very dark which plays in the favor of the pe of the predators. Got tongue tied there. That will be nice, but no chameleons. I've been searching for chameleons and I have yet to see one. They oh, they're just hiding away. That's probably what they're doing. They're just hiding deeper and deeper into the trees trying to keep nice and warm. Now, one thing that I'm need to ask all of you is who won the Franklin competition anybody know I think it may have been me but you know I don't want to brag too much and uh, hurt Byron's ego <laughs> I'm just teasing of course it was, it was uh, it's just a little bit of fun and H Macy you were actually wondering exactly that who won the Franklin finding competition I don't know I I can't remember how many Franklin sightings I had we had to be a three Craig we had three three or four somewhere around there. I think Byron only had one or two. Now I see there's lots of... Uh, I keep getting excited because as I shine the light I see all these little reflective eyes looking at me except they're not eyes. They are droplets on the grass. 
they just keep thinking that they're spiders and things because sp even spiders eyes reflect with the light but I'm, oh my goodness what on earth is what has gone on over here almost drove into that too busy searching for chameleons <laughs> I don't know why all this is piled up on the road like that maybe they were uh, I think they might have been dragging roads and accumulated some debris oh well we'll just go around it then and carry on there was something else that I wanted to tell you that was really funny. Oh, remember how I said that I didn't have headlights? <laughs> you all laugh at me. <laughs> oh no, if I don't throw this mic pack into the long grass so I never find it again. Put that in my pocket again, it keeps falling out. So I was thinking, I was like, why don't I have any headlights? This is ridiculous because I've been driving uh, rusty for such a long time. And Craig was like, oh, you know, Wendy has a, another switch. And I was like, yeah, and I'm playing with the light switches. And he goes, no, 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 under the, the, so we've got all these switches over here. You can have a look. We've got all these switches over here and they control the little lights on the side uh, and at the back. And then here's the sneaky, so I don't actually think you can see it, but there's a sneaky switch just under the steering wheel, that one. And that turns light on and off. It also turns my monitor on and off too, which you may have seen. <laughs> it's a multi-purpose switch. So I'm so thankful that I have lights now because like I said it was so daunting trying to stay on the road but then also try and spot animals. Now that's very difficult. And then imagine trying to present. I would have driven into something. Even when I have lights I almost drive into things. It would have been a disaster. But thank goodness Batman to the rescue. Alright, who have we got? Lots of eyes, lots of impala. Moved up now onto quarantine. Good, good idea to come out in the open, especially on a night like tonight. They want to be able to see as much of the silhouettes in terms of predators coming towards them. So it's a good spot. So I think the wildebeest and the rest of the animals will probably come up here and maybe we'll see them in the morning. Anyways, I'm going to send you back across to Byron now for the last uh, final minutes of the show. I'm sure he's very chuffed with himself that he managed to track down all those lions. Good job. And, uh, well, yes, it's been a great drive. And, of course, I'll see you tomorrow. But let's go across to Byron. It has been a great drive indeed, Taylor. Thank you, and I'm sure you're very happy with finding that leopard too. Um, it's always wonderful when uh, when things come together at the end. Now, um, I'll just stop to listen. I could not hear a single owl calling tonight. I think it is a little too cold. I actually think I saw some snow starting to fall. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's, uh, it's obviously not that cold, but it feels cold. I think because we've been out here for a while, um, you know, when the chill just gets right down to your bones, it's uh, very, very cold, especially with all this water, uh, the bit of drizzle around this afternoon. Um, well, I really hope you all enjoyed the drive with us this afternoon. Paid off in the end. We were we were a bit worried. We thought this uh, all this rain is going to chase everything away, and uh, it kind of did to an extent. Sorry, there's just a car coming. Is it turning coming here? Anyway, but um, a big thank you to Taylor, of course, and Craig this afternoon. The ladies in final control. Nice to have Alice back, back from leave. And um, thank you again for all the wonderful questions. Always nice to hear from you, all the comments. And um, we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Don't forget, half an hour earlier tomorrow, we will be live at 6 a.m. Central African time. Don't forget that time change. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Goodbye. And thank you to the lions and leopards. <laughs>